Chapter 2381 They could not determine the number of hidden troops at that moment, so they decided to get in the car and escape before anything else. As a result, the remaining five got in the car one after another, preparing to flee. However, right after the car moved about 220 yards, there was a loud explosion. In an instant, the car was sent flying nearly 10 feet high in the air and turned into a ball of flames. Aiming their weapons at the ball of explosion, Sirius and Jasper unleashed a hail of gunfire, precisely eliminating their targets. Then, they returned to the room and rescued the three girls, who were already scared out of their wits. Sirius escorted them back to the highway and flagged down a car, after getting them in, he had the driver take them safely back to the city. When he flashed the weapon in his hand, the driver quickly agreed out of fear, not daring to have any malicious intentions. Watching the sunrise in the distance, Sirius and Jasper then called their organization for reinforcements to come over and clean up the gruesome scene. They accomplished the mission perfectly, but little did they know that one person was left behind. He was the last one to arrive at the rendezvous point, but upon his arrival, he saw his teammates brutally eliminated upon his arrival. Seizing the moment when those cleaners were not paying attention, he climbed onto the back of the truck loaded with dead bodies. The moment he found one person in particular, his fists clenched in resentment because that person was none other than his elder brother. He was brought into this job by his brother but I was held up by some business and ended up arriving only several days later. Unexpectedly, these few days of delay rendered him in separation by death with his elder brother. The man had a local appearance, and his family hailed from this country. However, they had long since broken away from the nation, becoming mercenaries for the world's superpowers. After removing his elder brother's wristwatch, he quickly jumped off the truck and went into hiding. Then, he extracted a memory card from the wristwatch and promptly connected it to his laptop, retrieving footage of everything that had happened that night. He watched the entire extermination captured by the wristwatch, and when the final image froze on the screen, he said through clenched teeth, it's you once again. The person captured in the image was none other than Jasper. Despite the blurry lighting, he recognized him at a glance. That person had once sabotaged his operations and subjected him to inhuman punishment. He had sought Jasper before to seek revenge for their previous encounter. However, he never expected that the person he had spent half a year searching in vain for would show up here. Furthermore, this time, this person killed the only family he had left in the world. Brother, I'll avenge you. I'll honor you with his decapitated head, he swore, slamming his fist hard on the ground. In the meantime, Sirius and Jasper had returned to the safe house. During tonight's operation, Sirius had sustained a graze wound on his arm from a bullet, so it needed bandaging. After Jasper finished bandaging his wound, he turned on his laptop and began checking the footage captured by the camera he had installed. Suddenly, a figure came into the frame but disappeared soon afterward. We missed one person. He returned to the scene, he told Sirius. Sirius replied imperturbably, seems like the press graves aren't out of danger yet. Now that this person is acting alone, we'll have a hard time tracking his movements. Jasper immediately tapped away at the keyboard, trying to identify the person, but to no avail. This person is meticulous at counter-surveillance. He didn't show up in any surveillance footage of nearby places, he might have entered the city. Then, we gotta be more vigilant. He's now lurking in the dark, watching our movements, said Sirius as he lay down to rest, closing his eyes. Jasper did not disturb him. Instead, he went to another room, and his phone started vibrating. He picked it up and answered it, hello. Willow's worried voice rang on the other end. I heard you disappeared last night. Where are you? Are you okay? I'm fine. I went out last night to meet with my partner. He reassured her. When will you be back at my place, then? I'll come over in the afternoon, said Jasper. I still need to check out the mercenary who slipped through the cracks. All right, then, I'll wait for you, replied Willow reluctantly. Remember to stay put. I got it. I'll listen to you and not cause any trouble, she assured, promising she would not cause any trouble for him. Even Jared is working from home now, doing his best to remove obstacles and not add to their stress. 
Meanwhile, Jasper expanded the scope of his search. After pulling an all-nighter last night, he continued to work tirelessly, his eyes bloodshot. Sirius had awoken from sleep and noticed that he was still in his room searching for the mercenary. He could not help but advise, shouldn't you get some sleep? You can't keep staying up like this. Jasper closed his eyes. At that very moment, his nerves were stretched taut as a string. If they failed to capture the mercenary, it would be like planting a bomb next to the press graves. Here, take one of this and go to sleep. Sirius handed him a sleeping pill. This was their way of forcing themselves to sleep. Jasper took it and washed it down with water. After that, he lay down on the couch and closed his eyes to sleep. Just an hour later, he was jolted awake by a nightmare. He had not had nightmares in a long time, but in the dream, he saw Willow being held hostage by the mysterious mercenary approaching him. Even in his sleep, the scene was enough to bring him out in a cold sweat. As he opened his eyes and realized it was not reality, he noticed his forehead was already covered in a cold sweat. You had a nightmare? Sirius asked him. This time, it was his turn to operate the laptop, but the task he had taken on yielded some results. I checked the illegal fishing boats on the coast and found something at last. He handed the laptop over to Jasper. Only a blurry figure was captured on screen, but Jasper's heart clenched at the sight of it. It's him. His reaction startled Sirius. What's wrong? You've seen him before. Jasper explained, he's a top assassin trained by Monsent. He got fired for making mistakes, but he's in the same league as us in terms of fighting skills and other capabilities. He's Al highly trained killing machine. Seeing that even Jasper showed a hint of fear toward that person, Sirius dared not take this lightly anymore. He said with a nod, we gotta stay vigilant, then. Jasper was alarmed, too. If he were protecting anyone else, he might be able to carry out his task with ease. However, since he was guarding the press graves, he had to ensure his task was completed flawlessly. Jasper, for now, I need you to closely protect the press graves at once. You need to live under the same roof with them, said Sirius with a serious countenance. Jasper agreed with this suggestion. This assassin is highly capable and can disable any surveillance cameras, sneaking in anywhere like a ghost. Okay, I'll propose this to the press graves, he replied. At 3 p.m., Willow was waiting for Jasper at home. She thought he was only going back to the area where the bodyguards were stationed, but it surprised her when he arrived carrying a bag of belongings. Standing in front of her, Hell announced in a serious tone, From now on, I must protect your family closely. She fluttered her eyes and blurted out surprisingly, Do you mean close protection? At that, Jared instantly covered his mouth and cleared his throat before reminding his sister to act more ladylike. Willow, don't get in Mr. Wyatt's way. The woman also realized she might have been a little too excited and could only reply, I was just asking. Jasper turned to Jared, informing. Young Master Tillman, what I meant is to share the same bedroom with her and provide her with close protection 24-7. Just as disappointment was about to cloud Willow's heart, his words gave her a glimmer of hope. Oh, really? Jared was also taken aback for a moment. I'd like to have a word with you, young Master Tillman, said Jasper. He had to let Jared know the seriousness of the situation. Seeing that the man was about to converse with Jared in her absence, she wondered what the content was, given their relationship. I want to hear it, too, she said immediately. Jasper turned her down firmly. No, you can't listen in on this. Willow instantly blinked at him with a hurt demeanor while looking at him with an angry pout. Jared could not help but persuade her. Willow, you should stay out of man-to-man -man conversations. Be good, will you? After that, he said to Jasper, Mr. Wyatt, this way, please. Once they came into a quiet study, Jasper took out his laptop and explained the ins and outs of the situation. Just as he expected, Jared took this seriously. If that's the case, we need to be on guard. It seems that this person is no less formidable than you. He's a killing machine painstakingly trained by Monsant. Unlike the team of mercenaries whom we took out, he's harder to deal with. And besides, I once intercepted him during his job, so he's holding a grudge against me. 
This time, he'll do whatever it takes to finish the job and keep the bounty all to himself, explained Jasper. In that case, Jasper, I'm leaving Willow to your protection. At the same time, I'll protect my family and myself, said Jared. Now, he also had to protect his wife and child from harm. Understood. I'll stay close by her side 24-7 without letting her out of my sight. Jared nodded. With Jasper by her side, I won't have to worry. In the meantime, Willow was in the living room waiting for the two men to return. When she saw them come out, she immediately switched from sitting with her legs wide apart like a man to a ladylike posture. A touch of loving amusement flitted across Jasper's heart as he took this in. Jared came to her side and said to her with a serious countenance, Willow, from now on, Mr. Wyatt will live with you and follow you wherever you go. Don't play any tricks. Also, you'll do everything he says. Don't worry, Jared. I'll be on my best behavior, replied Willow, reassuring him before winking at a certain man. Jasper began to doubt her words. Will she behave? Jared also felt helpless about her, but he believed Jasper would have a way with her. This sister of mine has always been quirky and mischievous since she was a child. Even mom and dad have no idea what to do with her sometimes. Well then, Willow, take Mr. Wyatt back to your room. Allow him to sleep on your couch for the time being, he said. Willow's bedroom was spacious, and it had a large couch she would usually use as a bed. And now, it came in handy for Jasper to settle down there. She nodded and said to the man, let's go, Jasper. Let me take you to my room. He nodded and followed her upstairs while carrying his bag of belongings. As they entered her master bedroom, she suddenly spotted something on the couch. Immediately, she trotted over to it and picked the item up, hiding it behind her back. However, Jasper's keen eyes quickly noticed what it was. It was a pink bra. Willow told him, come with me to the closet. I have an empty wardrobe which you can put your clothes in. He nodded before following her into the closet, where she opened the empty wardrobe with ample space inside. The man opened his bag of belongings. He brought only a few clothes just three sets of them in total and his personal belongings consisted only of a razor and a charger. Willow came over, saying, let me hang up your clothes for you. Wow, you don't have that many. I'll get somebody to bring you a few sets of them. Jasper shook his head. There's no need to. These are enough. She felt sorry for him. Wrapping her arms around his waist from behind, she pressed her face against his back, saying, can't I be nice to you? He pried her hands away and turned around to face her. You've been great to me, but I can be better. She continued holding onto his waist while tilting her face up to look at him. Jasper looked at her little face, radiating an alluring charm of youth. Like a jewel sparkling with splendor, it was so beautiful that he could not help but want to make it his own. Willow, I'm currently on a mission, and you're under my protection, he said, reminding the girl in his arms. She winked playfully. So, as my protector, you're supposed to do whatever I ask, right? I should have known that she wasn't someone who would behave herself. He nodded, saying, yeah, that's technically right. Satisfied with this response, Willow nodded. Well then, let's get along well from now on. What would you like to drink? Order away. He nodded. Just a bottle of drinking water will do. She then went downstairs to get drinking water for him. On the other hand, he began his work. After deciding to upgrade the surveillance system around Presgrave Villa, he inserted his code program into it. Just then, Willow came back with the drinking water. At the sight of the man fully immersed in his work while sitting on the couch with his back straight, she found herself captivated. The way he focused on his work was always so charming, and the sight of his slender fingers typing out code commands was just so cool. She uncapped the water bottle and placed it beside him. I won't disturb you, then. I'll be in the lounge outside. Her heart had settled down. With the man by her side, she felt the whole world was rallying around her, Nothing new or interesting outside could draw her interest, and she could stay home quietly without going anywhere. She picked up her iPad and started playing games. She did play some to pass the time, though she was not skilled at it and was often defeated by others. After losing several rounds in a row, she sprawled on the couch in frustration. 
Just then, Jasper pushed the door open and came out. Seeing the look on her face, he asked with concern, what's wrong? I keep losing. Willow sighed helplessly before her eyes brightened up. Jasper, do you play, games? Can you play a few rounds for me? He sat down next to her, upon which she immediately taught him how to play. After listening attentively as she explained the gameplay several times, he took the iPad from her and started playing for her. She noticed that his hands' movements were fast, precise, and highly defensive. Just as she expected, he won the first round. She looked at him with admiration as he proceeded to the second round and won again. She clapped in excitement, saying, Wow! You're amazing! After finishing three rounds, he handed the iPad back to her. You're on your own now. She listened to him diligently as though she were a child. Since he was unwilling to play such childish games, she decided not to play, either. She asked him, where are you going, then? He replied, I'm going to check the surroundings and reposition some surveillance cameras. You stay here and wait for me. Suddenly, she grabbed his arm. Give me a kiss before you go. Jasper was speechless. Just a kiss on the cheek will do, demanded Willow. The man had no choice but to comply with her overbearing command. Cupping her little face in both hands, he pressed his lips onto her rosy ones, his breath slightly heavier. Her eyes widened slightly as she felt the intense rush of hormones between their lips. Feeling somewhat dizzy, she shyly closed her eyes, savoring the kiss from her beloved on this quiet afternoon. Inside an apartment in the city center, a mercenary with an aura of bloodlust was gazing at the city with eyes full of hatred and murderous intent. He took out his phone and opened a photo. It was a recent snapshot of Jasper's movements, and in the photo stood a beautiful girl beside him. She was the daughter of the Presgrave family, Willow. Inevitably, she also became one of his current targets. All his team members were killed, but the bounty was still available a whopping $300 million. As long as he continued to finish this job, all the money would be his. He stared at the girl in the photo, capturing the look in Jasper's eyes as he looked at her. A sinister smile curved his lips. Jasper Wyatt, I finally found a way to make you suffer the most painful death. Killing you with a single blow isn't the most agonizing way. It's making you watch your beloved woman die before you that will truly make your life a living hell. He was Calvin Fitch, a killing machine trained by Monsant who ranked at the top of assassins. He had superb hacking skills and the most terrifying means and physical prowess. The only time he had failed was when Jasper intercepted him and got him kicked out of his previous organization. For him, the incident was a lifelong disgrace. He had been planning to take revenge against Jasper but had not anticipated coming across him during this mission. Moreover, he discovered the man was in love with a certain girl, which piqued his interest in this job even more. He reached for his laptop and began attacking Presgrave Villa's surveillance system. Just when he was in the midst of writing code to breach the barrier, a line of intercepting code appeared. After staring at it for a few seconds, he let out a sneer. Jasper, is this your doing? Do you think I'll lose to you? In the meantime, Jasper was in the guest room next to Willow's bedroom. When his laptop sounded an alarm, he immediately picked it up and sat down. Looking at the targeted lines of code, he knitted his brows and started a virtual contest with Calvin online. The men were among the best, excelling in both intelligence and hacking skills. Needless to say, they were formidable opponents. Just then, Calvin sent a voice message using a voice changer. It's been a while, Jasper. This time, you'll die at my hands. Well then, give it a try, replied Jasper. A taunting voice came from the other end. Miss Presgrave is truly beautiful. I fell for her at first sight. I wonder how much fun it'd be to play with her. Ha ha. Jasper knew he shouldn't let his opponent affect his mood. Still, hearing him speak of Willow like that, he could not control the surge of anger within him. Zip it. Calvin replied, seems like you've indeed fallen for her. Jasper, you'll see your woman underneath my body one day. After listening to that, Jasper continued typing lines of code, fixing the vulnerability while ignoring Calvin's foul mouth. Then, he closed the laptop, stood up, and went outside. As Willow was stuck at home, she had no choice but to pass the time reading and playing games. 
Just then, her phone suddenly displayed a spooky face. Ah, she screamed with fright and quickly tossed her phone away. Jasper immediately came to her side. What happened? It's my phone, it showed a horrifying, bloody face. It's so scary. Her face was pale with fright. The man pulled her into his arms, knowing that it was Calvin's doing. Avoid using your phone and other electronic devices for the time being, he said tenderly. She had never imagined that her phone could be compromised by those people, so she replied with a nod, Okay, I'll do as you say. Jasper took her into his room before picking up his phone and sending a message to Sirius. This was because he had just managed to intercept an IP address and needed him to check whether Calvin was at that location. After sending the message, he watched Willow sit on the couch with a somewhat troubled face. He sat down next to her, saying, Were you scared? She was worried about him, though. Not really, but this person's so hard to deal with. What will you do? If you ever confront him in the future, you have to be careful. Jasper also knew that he could not let his guard down this time because this asterisk SSHOLE had already set his sights on her. Willow, promise me that you won't leave my side no matter what happens. Okay, I got it, she replied. At that moment, she just wanted to stay by his side, not wanting to care about anything out there. In the evening, Jasper had a talk with Jared about the incident, and he also sensed that this Calvin guy was out of the ordinary. Faced with such a wolf-like adversary, they had to stick together and not provide him with any opportunities. After dinner, Jasper brought his laptop to Willow's room. At that moment, she was reading a book. This was her way of passing the time since she could not use any electronic devices. He felt sorry for her, for it was rare for this lady to behave so well, and she had eaten so little for dinner. She got out of bed and came over to his side. However, she did not do anything in particular, she merely sat beside him like a kitten staring into space. Closing his laptop, he drew her into his embrace with eyes full of affection and tenderness. At that moment, his phone vibrated. He looked at it and saw it was from Sirius. Along with it were several photos of Calvin. They showed he was buying something in a grocery store near where he was last seen. Leave this to me, you should stay with the Pressgraves. That was what Sirius sent. Feeling tense, Jasper was worried to let his team member act alone, so he replied, be careful. In the meantime, inside a grocery store in the city, Sirius was disguised as a customer. He was inside the store, pretending to buy something while watching Calvin's every move. However, after choosing something from the racks, Calvin headed to the cashier counter. When Sirius went after him, he discovered the latter was not at the counter. Just as his heart sank, he felt a gun being pushed up against his waist, followed by Calvin's smug voice. You must be serious. At that point, Sirius secretly realized he had messed up. It turned out Calvin had already obtained his files. Therefore, he raised his hands, asking, What do you want? Don't worry. I won't kill you, I'm more interested in Jasper Wyatt. He's the one I'm looking for. After saying so, Calvin used his gun to force Sirius to leave the grocery store and head toward a deserted alleyway. Sirius immediately found a chance to fight back, and Calvin instantly started fighting with him. Though Sirius was a skilled fighter, Calvin's moves were more vicious. Once Calvin threw Sirius to the ground, he stepped on Sirius' back and took the latter's phone. Then, Calvin unlocked the phone and took a picture to send to Jasper. Along with it were the words, Come see me within half an hour, or he dies. Afterward, Sirius was brought back to Calvin's apartment. On the other hand, Sirius did not expect Calvin to have already found out his identity and could even catch him alive to be brought back. You can kill me if you want to. Stop with the nonsense, Sirius demanded coldly. His hands and feet were cuffed with Calvin's special cuffs. Even an expert in escaping all sorts of bonds could not unlock those cuffs. Don't fret. You will die sooner or later, but you must serve your purpose before that. I won't kill you until I capture your comrade, Jasper Wyatt. Calvin sat on the couch, glancing at Sirius with a sneer. Your comrade is my target. He will die before you do. Are you sure you can kill him? He's our best, and you're nothing compared to him. Sirius chastised Calvin. 
Upon hearing that, Calvin became furious and reached for his gun. He pointed it at Sirius' leg and shot his thigh, causing him to draw a sharp breath. Even though they were highly trained special ops soldiers, they were still human. I made sure you won't die before all your blood has drained from your body. Once that was said, Calvin took Sirius' phone and took another picture to send to Jasper. At the same time, Jasper, who had just finished patrolling the Presgrave residence and returned to his room, heard the notification tune and immediately grabbed his phone. When he saw there were four pictures sent to his phone, he opened them. His expression instantly turned tense. Sirius. Has been captured and injured. SH asterisk T. At that moment, Jasper received a call from Sirius' phone. Knowing that it must be Calvin, he answered the call. Hello. Hello, Jasper. It's me. If you want to save your friend, you should be on your way here by now. I'll plant explosives nearby, so if you can arrive in time, you will be able to save your friend and all the residents in this apartment. Otherwise, the entire apartment complex will explode and collapse. What trick are you trying to pull off? You can think it's a trick for all I care. Once Calvin finished, he ended the call and took another picture. It showed Sirius with a heavy-duty bomb attached to him. In the meantime, Jasper had already tracked Sirius' location through his phone. The latter was currently on the sixth floor of an apartment complex in the city center. Immediately, Jasper tapped into the security footage around the building to ensure that Calvin had taken Sirius into that building. Jasper quickly called his uncle, Antoine, and reported the current situation to him. Upon hearing that the residents of an apartment complex were in danger, Antoine became serious. Jasper, you have to try your best to save Sirius and ensure the safety of everyone inside that apartment complex. Yes, Uncle Antoine, I understand. I'll head over immediately Jasper accepted the order. When Jasper pushed the door open, Willow was doing the same, and they almost crashed into each other. Jasper held her shoulder and pulled her into his room before pinning her to the wall. Meanwhile, Willow was shocked as she gazed at him with wide eyes. Willie, something happened to my teammate, and I need to leave for one hour. During this time, I need you to stay at home. Don't go outside, no matter what you hear or see, understand? Jasper looked at her with a burning gaze. Willow nodded obediently. Okay, I understand. But at the same time, she was worried. Will you be in danger? Don't worry about me. Jasper's gaze landed on her face. He knew Calvin captured Sirius to lure him out from the Presgrave residence. Therefore, he had no idea what Calvin might do next. However, he was sure that whatever the other was going to do, it was targeted at the Presgraves. You have to be careful. I promise I won't leave the villa, Willow promised while raising her hand as though she was taking an oath. Jasper nodded and quickly pecked her forehead. Wait for me to return. Seeing Jasper about to leave, Willow felt her heart tightening up because all of his missions were accompanied by danger. You must come home. I'll be waiting for you, Willow told him. With a heavy nod, Jasper promised, I promise I'll come home safe and sound. Though he said that, Willow was still unwilling to let him leave, so he opened his arms and embraced her. Don't worry about me. With no choice, Willow could only release him. But before leaving, Jasper went to see Jared, who promised not to let his sister out of his sight. At the same time, he went to notify the security team at the villa and asked them to stand guard at their designated positions. Once Jasper had everything arranged, he sped toward the city center. In the meantime, Calvin, who was making his way to the Presgrave residence, immediately noticed Jasper's movements through Sirius' phone. He sneered. Oh, Jasper. You fell for it. In the meantime, Jared came to Willow's room and asked, Willie, are you all right? I'm fine, Jared. I'm just very worried about him. You should trust his abilities. He'll be fine. Willow turned to look at Jared. Jared, don't worry about me. I promise not to go anywhere, and I'll stay inside the house. You should go and be with Ellen. Okay, but remember not to go anywhere. Once Jared exhorted her, he left to return to his family. With the security guards standing by all the crucial areas around the villa, there would be some kind of commotion if Calvin arrived. By then, he could also come forward and deal with that man. Willow heard someone knocking on her door. 
When she turned around, she saw it was the servant who had cared for her for many years, Sasha Pickett. Miss Presgrave, have some milk. Sasha brought over a cup of milk. Since Willow was feeling thirsty from being so worried, she smiled. Thank you, Miss Pickett. Sasha bent over to help Willow clean up her things, but tears suddenly began to fall from her eyes. However, Willow was oblivious to that because she was drinking her milk, thinking about Jasper. Suddenly, she felt dizzy and weak. When she realized what was happening, she looked at Sasha but heard the latter say, Miss Presgrave, I'm sorry, but I can't let my two sons die. I would rather die for them. Willow fell unconscious, but right before her consciousness faded, she heard herself call out Jasper's name. Afterward, Sasha pushed a large trash can into the room. She knew there were no cameras inside Willow's room, so it was safe to place Willow in the trash can inside the room. It was a new one, of course, and she even placed a blanket inside so that Willow wouldn't feel too uncomfortable. They wouldn't have known that Willow was already in the car. Sasha had been working as a maid in the Presgrave family for 20 years. After Willow was born, she had worked diligently here. The Presgrave family treated her very well, and her remuneration was pretty high. However, when faced with the kidnapping of her son and husband, she made the decision to save her family's lives. She was forced to do something illegal against her conscience. She knew that the Presgrave family was in danger this time, but she was simple-minded. She felt the young lady of the Presgrave family wouldn't easily come to harm, for she was a person of value and status. At most, she might suffer a bit, and the Presgrave family would pay a large ransom to rescue her. As Sasha passed through the main gate, Shell behaved as usual, and the bodyguards didn't inspect her car. The focus now was on external security, so they overlooked this detail, making it possible to kidnap Willow. Sasha drove the car away. Since there were no surveillance cameras in Willow's room, no one knew that Willow was gone. Sasha quickly drove toward the city center. At this moment, Jared had just finished putting his son to sleep in the third-floor living room of the Presgrave family and was preparing to go downstairs for a drink. At the thought of Willow being confined to her room and most likely worried about Jasper until she wouldn't eat or drink, Jared wanted to invite her downstairs for a bite. He pushed open the door and expected to find his sister on the bed or the sofa where she usually lays, but she was nowhere to be found. Willie. He stepped into the room and called his sister's name. However, there was no response in the room. Jared frowned and was about to leave when he saw her phone, which she always kept with her, lying on the sofa. He picked up his sister's phone and quickly searched the entire floor. After questioning the maids, he found out that no one had seen Willow. Jared felt something amiss and immediately called Ricky, the head of the security team, to review the surveillance footage and find out where his sister had gone off to. Ricky was in the control room, and he immediately accessed the surveillance video from 10 minutes ago. He saw Sasha first bringing tea into Willow's room. Shortly after, the woman wheeled a trash can inside. This was highly unusual. Willow's room required meticulous cleaning, and she wouldn't have allowed a large trash can inside. Something was definitely amiss. He quickly reviewed Sasha's actions in the next 10 minutes and saw that her car had been parked in a blind spot from where she had left two minutes later. Ricky immediately reported this to Jared, who felt that something had happened to his sister. He picked up his phone and activated a signal. It was a tracking signal every Presgrave carried with them, and it could trace their exact location. Sure enough, it showed that Willow was heading toward the city center. Unexpectedly, they had failed to prevent the nanny, who had been working for the Presgrave family for over 20 years, from slipping through their security at this critical moment. Jared's handsome face darkened, and he immediately assembled ten bodyguards to start searching for his sister. Sasha's phone was now unreachable, but based on Willow's location, Jared immediately ordered the company's bodyguards to intercept Sasha's car. Meanwhile, a black SUV followed behind Sasha's car. The driver was directing Sasha to take Willow to a designated location. At this moment, Jasper kicked open the door on the sixth floor of an apartment building and saw Sirius tied to a chair, a miniature bomb strapped to him. Though it was small, its explosive power was enough to bring down the entire apartment. Don't mind me, you need to go, Sirius said to Jasper calmly. 
The countdown on the bomb had already reached five minutes, and disarming this bomb was extremely difficult. It's controlled by a key, but it's with Calvin, Sirius said helplessly. Keep your mouth shut. After Jasper spoke, he pulled out two wires from the bomb and connected them to a device, subsequently linking his computer to it. He quickly assembled a controller on his computer. Although the bomb was controlled by a key, as long as it was an electronic control product, he could find a way to work around it. This would have usually taken an hour, but he managed to do so within five minutes. Sweat was already appearing on Sirius' forehead, and Jasper was struggling too, but he didn't stop working. He was searching for the decryption code. Finally, the code calculated the first digit of the four-digit passcode. By the third-minute mark, he retrieved the second digit. As they progressed, it took them more time to decrypt the passcode. There were only two minutes left. Can it be done? Don't risk your life to save me, Sirius asked him. Jasper looked at him and said, I'm not doing it for you. Why you brat? Sirius chuckled while trying to lighten the mood. The last digit appeared with five seconds left to spare. Jasper inputted the four numbers almost instantly, and with only one second left, he unlocked it as Sirius closed his eyes in fear. The blinking red light on the bomb suddenly stopped, and a hidden key emerged from the hole. Sirius opened his eyes and took a deep breath after seeing that the bomb had been successfully disarmed. He looked at Jasper and said, Impressive. I can't even dispose of a bomb with this method. Jasper patted his shoulder. It's just luck. Don't think I don't know that your uncle has given you a lot of privileges. You've learned way more than me, remarked Sirius teasingly. Just then, Jasper's phone rang. He picked it up. Hello. Jasper, have you solved the situation at hand? I just did. Willie is in trouble. Jasper's hand that was holding the phone, trembled almost uncontrollably. Where is she, Mr. Presgrave? She fell into a trap set by my maid and was taken into the city. She's still in the car. Please come over immediately and join us. Send me the address, Jasper said while maintaining his composure. The address was sent, and Sirius immediately followed him downstairs. The two of them rushed out. At this moment, Jasper took out his laptop and immediately tracked Willow's location. As expected, she was still wearing her necklace, so they had her exact location. Sirius calculated the quickest route, then said, hold on tight. We'll intercept that car within 10 minutes. We have to be faster than that. Jasper wished he could fly. He knew how ruthless Calvin could be. If Willow fell into his hands, he dared not imagine the consequences. Sirius pressed the accelerator to the floor, and the car surged forward like a wild stallion gone, berserk, racing toward their destination. They were hoping to reach there in eight minutes. At this moment, the rescue teams converging from three directions were closing in on Sasha's car. Sasha was driving in a state of panic. There was a male voice coming from her phone. Keep going. Meanwhile, Willow was still unconscious in the trunk of Sasha's car. She had been heavily drugged this time, and she wouldn't be waking up anytime soon. However, Sasha couldn't see the abductor's face clearly, she could only hear his continuous orders through the phone. She continued to drive under his instructions. She had never driven this fast before, and her legs were trembling. After speeding onto the overpass, she accelerated toward the seaside. Behind her, Calvin urged, faster. In his car, there was a laptop he used to track Sirius and Jasper's whereabouts. He noticed they were less than five miles away from them. Sasha, driven by the thought of her husband and son, stepped on the gas pedal and sped ahead while overtaking the other cars along the way. Finally, after reaching an exit, she continued down the coastal road. She knew that she would be able to reunite with her husband and son at the destination. She had already decided her fate the moment she accepted this mission, embarking on this journey to save her son and sacrifice herself. Behind her, a convoy of vehicles sped forward with Jared in the leading car. While tracking Sasha's car, he was becoming increasingly anxious. Faster, faster, Jared had to ensure his sister's safety. After driving for over six miles, Sasha suddenly turned onto a narrow mountain road. She had no idea where it led, but Calvin, who was following her, kept feeding her instructions through the phone. She eventually saw the cliff's edge and was terrified. 
She slammed on the brakes, bringing the vehicle to a halt. She got out of the car while trembling, opened the trunk, and found a delicate figure lying there. Willow's pretty face came into view as Sasha came closer. She kneeled before Calvin, her voice trembling. Please spare my son and husband. I beg you. I've done as you asked, so please spare them. Calvin smirked and pointed in a direction before saying, they're over there. Go save them yourself. Sasha ran toward the direction he had pointed at and found her son and husband tied up under a tree. She cried as she approached them and quickly reached out to untie the pair. After she removed the cloth from her son's mouth, he cried. Mom, what's going on? She removed the cloth from her husband's mouth as well, and he asked, What have you gotten us into? Do you know we almost died because of you? After I untie you both, you need to leave from this direction and stop asking questions, Sasha instructed them. Meanwhile, Calvin bent down in front of Willow and said, Jasper has good taste for choosing such a beautiful girl. It's a pity he won't get to spend more time with you. Willow was beginning to regain consciousness, and when she opened her eyes, she suddenly saw a menacing face. She recoiled in fear and asked angrily, Who the hell are you? You probably know me, Calvin replied. She soon realized he was the one who had attacked her family. She sat up in the trunk, wanting to get out of the car. Calvin suddenly grabbed her by the throat and lifted her out. Willow had never experienced such treatment before. She felt an immediate choking sensation and struggled while slapping the man's hand, unable to catch her breath. He tossed her onto a grassy area nearby and sneered. Do you think you can escape from me? My family won't spare you if you kill me. My boyfriend will also hunt you to the ends of the earth, Willow retorted angrily. Calvin chuckled coldly. Your boyfriend, Jasper. Willow fell silent and refused to answer him. She was only thinking about finding an opportunity to escape. Just then, she felt her necklace, and a strong sense of concern immediately hit her. This necklace contained a tracking device belonging to Jasper, so he was probably on his way right now. No, don't come looking for me, Jasper. Before she could fully come to her senses, Calvin forcefully pulled her up again. Her wrists were handcuffed within seconds, with the other end chained to the car door beside her. She was now unable to escape. Let me go, Willow demanded angrily. Calvin returned to his car, took out a computer, and saw a red dot less than half a mile away from their location. He smirked coldly, for Jasper had finally arrived. At this moment, a convoy of speeding vehicles raced down the narrow road. Both Jasper and Jared had arrived. Jasper's car sped forward, leading the way. When he saw Willow leaning against the car frame, his heart was instantly gripped with pain and anxiety. His eyes were also filled with concern and worry. Chapter 2391. Calm down, said Sirius, attempting to reassure Jasper. Don't act impulsively. If Calvin dares to harm her, I'll make sure he dies a painful death. Jasper clenched his fists tightly. Jasper got out of the car, and three other cars screeched to a halt next to him. Jared quickly stepped out of his car and shouted at Calvin, release my sister. Oh, everyone's here. Calvin suddenly pulled out a gun and pointed it at Willow's forehead before addressing the row of people in front of him. Stay where you are, or I'll kill her right now. Willow looked at the people who had come to rescue her, her eyes instantly welling up with tears. She never expected the maid, who had taken care of her for twenty years, would kidnap her in such a manner. Just leave, Jared. Don't bother saving me, Willow shouted at them. Even with a gun pointed at her head, she felt no fear. She was even more worried about the people standing in front of her. Her loved ones were all present, after all. Willie, Jasper exclaimed involuntarily. His eyes were filled with pain and anxiety. Everyone except Jasper will have to back off to the main road over there, or I won't even give you a chance to negotiate, Calvin shouted while pointing at Jared. Especially you, Mr. Presgrave. If you don't want to die with your sister, leave. Let my sister go, and you can name your conditions, Jared said in a deep voice. How could he leave right now? I have a personal grudge with Jasper. You don't need to get involved. Scram. After he finished speaking, Calvin suddenly fired a shot into the air. The gunshot startled Willow, and she let out a sharp scream while covering her ears with one hand. Willie. Willow. 
Both men called out in concern at the same time. However, Calvin bellowed, I won't say it again. I'll count to ten, and if all of you don't disappear, you won't get a chance to negotiate. Jasper turned to look at Jared while gritting his teeth and said, No matter what the cost, I will save Willie. I can't let you take the risk alone, Jared said. If they left, Jasper would be tortured to death by Calvin. Trust me on this, Jasper said to Jared. Ten, nine, eight, Calvin had already started counting. Jared didn't dare provoke this killer. At this point, he could only trust Jasper. He waved his hand, and his subordinates all returned to their cars, Sirius included. They then turned the car around and left. Calvin suddenly grabbed Willow by the throat and said to Jasper, Jasper, your woman is really beautiful. Jasper clenched his fists as he watched Calvin choke Willow roughly, almost breaking his skin. Let her go, you loser. Face me if you have the guts, Jasper said angrily. He was trying to provoke Calvin. Needless to say, the man took the bait. He sneered and asked, what did you say? Are you calling me a loser? Aren't you? In our last mission, I outperformed you with ease. This proves that I'm stronger than you. Calvin's face darkened. Do you think you're worthy of competing with me? Calvin had always been proud and arrogant, and he couldn't tolerate anyone being stronger than him, especially Jasper. Because of him, Calvin had been cast aside by their previous organization like trash. He harbored deep resentment and was determined to prove that he was undoubtedly stronger than Jasper. I challenge you to a fight. What kind of man uses a woman as leverage? Jasper coldly snorted, his eyes filled with disdain. Calvin could have easily dealt with Jasper using his gun, but he wanted to prove himself. He wanted to prove that he was stronger than Jasper, even though he could see that Jasper was trying to provoke him. I am the strongest one here, and I will make you understand how powerful I am, Calvin said. He then threw the gun into a nearby car and took out a small bomb before placing it on the car's hood. Then, he set a timer. If you can't defeat me within 10 minutes, you'll watch your woman explode into pieces. Willow took a deep breath and looked at Jasper. She wondered, just 10 minutes. How can Jasper defeat this guy in such a short time? This guy is mad. I can tell he's on Jasper's level. But how can Jasper focus on a duel when I'm here, holding his attention? Don't worry about me, Jasper. Go. You don't have to do this for me, she pleaded with teary eyes. Jasper shook his head and said firmly, I'm not leaving. He took off his coat, revealing a gray shirt. His eyes locked onto Willow's with unwavering determination. At this, Calvin sneered and launched an attack. The two men clashed, every punch and kick carrying deadly force. Jasper was clearly distracted, and even though Willow remained silent, her presence weighed on his mind. Suddenly, Calvin kicked Jasper to the ground and struck his abdomen with his elbow. Ah, she cried out with tears streaming down her face and pleaded desperately, stop. Please, no more fighting. Desperate, she struggled against her handcuffs, causing her delicate skin to bear the brunt of her efforts. Yet, her focus remained firmly on Jasper. Blood trickled from the corner of Jasper's mouth after a blow to his abdomen. As Calvin moved in to strangle him, Jasper blocked with his hand and forcefully shoved him away before rising to his feet. With a contemptuous sneer, Calvin taunted, You're weak, Jasper. Do you think you can challenge me? Where did your confidence come from? Jasper stood his ground and wiped off the blood on his mouth. If you've got the guts, finish me off. Until then, you haven't won. Those words only stoked Calvin's anger and amplified his desire to end Jasper's life and savor his suffering. Come on, coward, get back on your feet and fight, he taunted, signaling for a final showdown. Stop. Please, just stop, Willow pleaded desperately as she sensed Calvin's murderous intent. She could see how determined Calvin was to take Jasper's life, especially since Jasper had already coughed up blood from an earlier attack. Despite her pleas, no one paid any attention to her words. The countdown on the bomb strapped to her was down to seven minutes. Jasper glanced at the timer and defiantly challenged Calvin. If you want my life, come and take it. Seeing Jasper in a weakened state, Calvin felt even more triumphant and decided to use his fists to send Jasper out of this world. In a relentless attack, Calvin aimed to send Jasper into oblivion with his fists. 
Jasper managed to block some of the blows but was pushed back. Calvin noticed Jasper's weakening strength, and the desire to kill him intensified. Calvin thought, once I kill Jasper and Willow, my mission will be considered a success. The client only cares that someone from the Presgrave family suffers greatly, not who dies. Meanwhile, Willow witnessed the brutal assault on Jasper as he was on the ground and spitting out blood. Her heart shattered, and in that moment, she cared not for her own fate, even if it meant being blown to pieces. She couldn't bear to see Jasper die for her. Jasper, go, don't worry about me, she cried, tears clouding her vision and the wind tousling her long hair. Despair was etched across her face. After hearing that, Jasper looked at Willow. Just then, Calvin turned to look at her as well. He sneered, saying, Today, you'll watch your beloved woman die right before your eyes. I won't take your life just yet. I want you to witness how she shatters into pieces. With a twisted grin, he revealed a key hanging from his neck. This is the key to unlocking her handcuffs, but unfortunately, you don't have the strength to take it from me. Suddenly, he delivered a forceful kick to Jasper's chest. Jasper tried to block the attack, but Calvin grabbed his shoulder, forcing him to his knees. I want you to keep your eyes wide open and see how she dies. With just three minutes left on the countdown timer next to Willow, she looked at Jasper, mentally preparing for the inevitable. Her sole wish was to imprint his image in her memory before dying. She hoped that in her next life, she could spot him in a crowd, for if they couldn't be together in this lifetime, she was determined to reunite with him in the next. While Calvin had Jasper pinned down, it appeared Calvin had the upper hand. However, Jasper spotted an opportunity when Calvin let his guard down and quickly took action. With a quick move, Jasper elbowed the ground and wrapped his long legs around Calvin's neck. He sat firmly on Calvin, reaching for the key hanging around his neck, and yanked it. Calvin was instantly strangled by the chain, which turned into a deadly weapon, cutting off his breath and turning his face purple. He desperately swung his fists, trying to dislodge Jasper from his shoulders. However, Jasper's legs continued to tighten around Calvin's neck, dragging him closer to the edge of death. Calvin's face changed to a sickly shade of purple and red. Suddenly, blood spurted from Calvin's neck as the chain severed his windpipe. With a fierce expression, he fell to his knees. Only then did Jasper step away and remove the chain hanging from Calvin's neck. At this critical moment, there were just 15 seconds left on the countdown timer next to Willow. Willow had been engrossed in Jasper's counterattack, forgetting momentarily that she stood next to the Grim Reaper. However, when Jasper rushed to unlock her handcuffs, she realized the danger she was still in. Just then, she saw Calvin, who had fallen to the ground, suddenly rise again. Despite his broken neck, he was brimming with murderous intent as he charged toward Jasper. Jasper, watch out, she shouted. Jasper quickly pushed Willow several feet away, concerned that Calvin might target her. Yet Calvin's aim was not her, he was going after Jasper. Summoning his last ounce of strength, Calvin pushed Jasper toward the cliff. At the same time, Jasper also realized Calvin's intentions. Join me in death. Calvin spat out a mouthful of blood as his eyes burned with hatred. Jasper quickly turned, shoving the bomb into Calvin's grasp, intent on escaping. However, Calvin, in a deft move, latched onto Jasper, tripping him up with a well-placed ankle lock. Then, Calvin dragged Jasper down the cliff. Jasper. Willow cried out and rushed over. Just then, Jared arrived and hugged his sister tightly. Willow, you can't go. Jasper. Sirius shouted as they had all seen the bomb in Calvin's hand earlier. I'm sorry, Jasper whispered, his final words, before plunging off the cliff. Jasper. You can't die. Willow struggled to get to him, but Jared, aware of the bomb, held her back firmly. Boom. A deafening explosion echoed from the sea, sending water shooting 30 feet into the air, showcasing the bomb's devastating power. As Willow heard the explosion, her mind went blank, and a dark consciousness enveloped her. In despair, she collapsed on the ground. Willow. Jared shouted and picked up his sister. He looked at her pale, tear-stained face, his heart heavy and chest tight with pain. He turned to Sirius and said, You handle things here. I'll take my sister back. 
Go ahead, young master Presgrave. Leave this to me, Sirius replied, his heart heavy, knowing Jasper's chances of survival were slim. Afterward, Jared carried his sister away quickly. They got into the car and instructed their bodyguard to drive to the city hospital. Standing at the bottom of the cliff, Sirius removed his coat and jumped into the sea. At the same time, the bodyguard, Ricky, shouted, get in the water and start the rescue. Over a dozen bodyguards jumped into the sea, desperately searching for the missing person. Despite the uncertain fate, they were determined to locate Jasper. At that moment, Sasha and her family watched everything unfold from a distance. Then, she turned to her husband and son, saying, You both need to leave this city immediately and never return. What about you, Mom? I'm responsible for Miss Presgrave's beloved's death. It would be shameful to keep on living. She hadn't expected that the man Willow loved the most would be the one to die. Nonetheless, she was grateful that Willow survived, otherwise, her guilt would have been overwhelming. Mom, what do you mean? Her son asked. Come home with us, honey. Sasha shook her head and walked to the nearby rocks. After one last glance at her son and husband, she jumped into the sea. Mom. Although a group of bodyguards searched for Jasper nearby, nobody noticed Sasha jumping into the sea. The rough waves made it nearly impossible to spot her, and since she had a determined intent to end her life, she didn't put up a fight and let herself sink beneath the water. However, her husband and son didn't dare to jump in to save her, as doing so from that height was almost certain death. Mom, Sasha's son wanted to jump several times but was held back by his father. Don't go, son. You can't save her. Eventually, Sasha's lifeless body floated to the surface and was soon swallowed by the waves in the distance. Meanwhile, Sirius and his bodyguards had scattered to search for survivors after the explosion caused chaos in the turbulent sea. He spotted a figure in the distance and swam toward it, hoping it was Jasper. Unfortunately, it turned out to be Calvin. He was severely injured and lifeless in the water. Despair filled Sirius' heart, but he continued swimming, driven by the hope of finding Jasper alive. Finally, a bodyguard shouted, and Sirius swam in that direction, finding Jasper floating on the surface. With relief, Sirius quickly checked Jasper's breathing and said, he's still breathing. We need to get him out fast. With a swift motion, the bodyguards above tossed down a handful of life buoys, allowing Sirius to pull an unconscious Jasper to the nearby beach. He performed CPR to expel the seawater from his chest. Jasper coughed up a few mouthfuls, his face pallid, but then a trickle of blood emerged from his ears. Sirius gently tapped Jasper's face and urged, Jasper, wake up. Then, Sirius and the bodyguards hurriedly transported Jasper to the car as they sped toward the nearest hospital. However, the hospital was still half an hour away. Upon arrival, they rushed Jasper into the emergency room. Sirius stood by the emergency room door, reaching out to contact Antoine to provide an immediate update. I is he still alive? Antoine's voice trembled on the other end. He's still alive for now. What about his other injuries? No visible external injuries, but were uncertain about internal damage. Jasper's receiving treatment at the hospital. I'll send someone to pick you up immediately. Also, my nephew must have no more contact with the Presgrave family. Bring him back. Sirius nodded, saying, understood. What about Miss Presgrave? How is she? She fainted, minor cuts and bruises. Okay. I'll communicate with the Presgrave family. Bring him back to me. Antoine gave the order. After ending the call, Sirius couldn't help but sigh, realizing that their profession allowed no room for love, as it would cost someone their life. He could only watch as this ill-fated couple drifted apart. Meanwhile, Jared was at the hospital and had just finished updating his parents. He told them about Willow's condition, and now Elliot and Anastasia were hurrying back from abroad. Jared's phone rang, and he saw an unfamiliar number. He answered hesitantly, hello. Mr. Presgrave, I'm Antoine Wyatt, Jasper's uncle and superior. There are important matters to discuss. I need your cooperation. Jared responded cautiously, go ahead, Mr. Wyatt. I'm listening. Jasper and your sister have developed feelings for each other, but now he's been seriously injured on a mission. 
The extent of his injuries isn't clear, but I don't want him to have further contact with your sister. Jared felt guilty, knowing Jasper had paid a heavy price this time. He said, I understand. I hope you also understand my concerns. Jasper's line of work isn't suitable for your sister. For their well-being, please tell her that he has sacrificed himself in this mission and ask her to sever her emotional ties with him. This, Jared hesitated briefly, aware of how significant Jasper was to Willow, perhaps even more than her own life. Please cooperate. It's for your sister's best interests, Antoine urged. Jared's gaze shifted to his unconscious sister, and he struggled to imagine her reaction upon waking up. He wondered if Willow would faint again after hearing this news. Nonetheless, he couldn't disregard Antoine's words. Jared knew that Jasper's profession wasn't conducive to starting a family. Even if his sister married him eventually, their life would be fraught with constant fear and danger not the future he wished for her. He reasoned that following Antoine's advice might be the right action. Hence, he needed to sever his sister's attachment to Jasper, allowing her to meet a remarkable man, rebuild her life, and enjoy stability. I agree, he replied. I'll do as you suggest. Good. Keep this matter strictly confidential, Antoine advised. I will. You have my word. After that, Jared couldn't resist asking, if Jasper wakes up, could you provide me with an update on his condition? I want to know how he's doing. Antoine responded firmly, I don't think that'll be necessary anymore, Mr. Presgrave. Thank you for your concern. Whether he lives or dies, it's now in fate's hands. Let's assume he's no longer with us. With those words, he hung up the phone. This was Jasper's worst performing mission in so many tasks. Antoine knew it was related to Willow because she had disrupted his actions and thoughts, preventing him from successfully completing the mission. From now on, he only needed an operative who could escape. Unharmed, not a nephew clouded by emotions. Meanwhile, a military helicopter landed in the hospital's grassy field. Jasper was wheeled out by a doctor, and two military medics rushed to assist, taking the medicine bottle from the doctor and lifting Jasper into the helicopter. Sirius observed the helicopter take off before leaving in his car. He needed to wrap up the remaining tasks and rejoin his team. He believed this mission was a success. Also, he expected the Presgrave family wouldn't remain passive, and the person responsible for their troubles would meet their end. After returning to the safe house, he organized his belongings and discreetly vanished from Averna. At the hospital, Jared sat by Willow's side, deeply worried as he looked at her pale face. He dreaded explaining everything to her because he knew it would cause her immense pain. Later that evening, he comforted Ellen over the phone outside the ward. She wanted to visit, but he convinced her to stay home and care for their son, advising against a visit for now. After hanging up, he re-entered the ward, noticing Willow starting to stir. He took a seat beside her and softly called, Willow. Willow. Deep within her subconscious, Willow fought to rouse herself. At that moment, Jared's comforting voice was like a beacon, prompting her to open her eyes. Within moments of regaining consciousness, Willow urgently grasped Jared's hand and asked, Where's Jasper? Take me to him. Her brother had issued strict orders to the bodyguards involved in the rescue, insisting on keeping it a secret. So, he could only respond with a regretful look, unsure of how to break the news to her. However, that one glance spoke volumes, shattering her heart before a word was uttered. And no, it can't be. He won't leave me behind, she sobbed with her hands covering her face. The pain she felt was unlike anything she'd ever experienced, and she couldn't fathom Jasper's absence. Jared reached out his hand to try and comfort his sister. Willow, he sacrificed himself for you. You must find the strength to carry on. Willow looked up with a pair of swollen red eyes. What's the point of living without Jasper? I'd rather be in his place. Tears continued to pour down her face, dampening the sheets. Her pallor made it seem as though she might faint at any moment. Memories of their love story filled her mind. His eyes, voice, and kiss enveloped her like a warm embrace. The idea of a life without him was unbearable. She couldn't imagine moving forward. Where is he? I need to see him, she said softly, fighting off the faintness creeping over her. She dreaded missing her chance to say a final goodbye. Willow, he's been brought back by the special forces. 
We won't be able to see him, Jared told her. No, you must find a way for me to see him one last time. If you don't help, I'll ask Dad or Mr. Lloyd. I have to see him, no matter what, she pleaded, tears streaming down her face. Jared's heart ached as he watched Willow's anguish. The entire family had pampered her since she was young and had never faced such adversity. They had ensured she never had to endure hardship, but now she had to grapple with the pain of losing her loved one. I can contact them, but I can't guarantee you'll get to see him, he tried to console her, knowing that raising her hopes would only deepen the disappointment. Jared knew Antoine had been adamant about severing Jasper's ties with Willow. Furthermore, as Jasper's only elder, even the Pressgraves could not change Antoine's decision. Really, Jared, I beg you. I want to see him for the last time, she said before bursting into tears. She couldn't accept a life without Jasper. Jared gently patted Willow, understanding that losing a loved one was an incredibly painful experience that no one could easily accept. Meanwhile, Jasper was on the operating table in a secret military hospital. He was surrounded by five or six doctors conducting various examinations. Standing outside the operation room, Antoine appeared to have aged significantly. His hair, typically tinged with a hint of gray from his demanding work, now appeared even grayer. He regretted bringing Jasper into the forces for training. If he had allowed Jasper to lead a normal life, Jasper would be managing a company worth billions and becoming an influential man. Unfortunately, Antoine had brought him into an organization like the Special Forces, forcing Jasper to adapt to a life of danger and uncertainty. On the other hand, Antoine wished for the Wyatt family's lineage to continue, but Jasper's profession ensured he could never lead a normal life. Even if he were to leave the military, the scars of his experiences would haunt him, preventing him from ever living like an ordinary person. At that moment, a doctor exited the operation theater and looked at Antoine, Mr. Wyatt, may I have a moment of your time? No need for that, just tell me. Antoine desperately wanted to know Jasper's condition. Judging by the initial test, the patient seems to have escaped any significant organ damage, which is positive news. However, there's a serious concern about his hearing. Antoine found it difficult to accept and asked, does that mean he's lost his hearing? completely. We won't know for sure until he wakes up. Right now, he needs rest. We'll also assess his brain and memory when he regains consciousness. Antoine felt relieved that Jasper had survived but couldn't shake his worries. As a member of the ex-special forces, having a keen hearing was essential to participate in missions. If Jasper lost his hearing, it could jeopardize his career. Hence, Antoine was determined to restore Jasper's hearing, no matter what. As for Jasper's memory, Antoine could only sigh helplessly. Jasper was his best agent and had never made a mistake on any mission. Antoine knew Jasper's emotions affected his judgment during the last mission. Just then, Antoine's phone rang, and he answered, Hello. Mr. Wyatt, it's Jared Presgrave. I wanted to ask, Mr. Presgrave, I assume your sister is awake. There's no need for further discussion on this matter. Please cooperate with me. On the other end, Jared reluctantly gave in upon hearing Antoine's firm response. Understood. I apologize for troubling you. Antoine knew he was acting selfishly, but he had his reasons. The following morning, Elliot and Anastasia hurried to the hospital from the airport. Their hearts sank when they saw how fragile Willow appeared, even though they had only been apart for a few days. Mom, Willow cried when she saw her mother, who ran over to hug her in tears. On the other hand, Elliot went out to talk with Jared. After hearing Antoine's wishes, he sighed. He felt guilty as their family matter had nearly cost Jasper his life. Hence, they decided not to pressure Antoine, no matter how much Willow cared for Jasper. Dad, let's plan a vacation for Willow once she's feeling better. Sure. We'll go as a family, Elliot agreed. During his time abroad, he had resolved a matter involving someone funding a war against their family. That person was no longer a threat. Dad, is that matter taken care of? Jared asked. Yes. Elliot nodded, and only they knew about the grim details. Elliot clenched his fist as he watched Willow and Anastasia through the window. He felt helpless as he couldn't do anything about his daughter's relationship. 
Is Antoine really against Willow having any contact with Jasper? I spoke to him. He's steadfast in his decision. He doesn't want Willow involved with Jasper anymore. Willow will find someone who loves her in the future, Elliot said. He only wanted his daughter to be happy. Right now, Willow believes Jasper is gone. We just need to handle this carefully, and she'll eventually recover from the trauma, Jared said, his gaze fixed on Willow with a heavy heart. Inside the ward, Anastasia comforted Willow, her own eyes red from shedding tears. She wiped her daughter's tears and assured her, Willow, I'll always be by your side. Willow sobbed in her mother's arms but gradually calmed down, like a newborn baby settling into sleep. However, her heart felt as if it had been repeatedly stabbed, shattering into pieces. She couldn't fathom that Jasper was no longer in this world. How could she accept it when he had been with her just the night before, calling her name and sharing his smile? Yet, at that moment, he was gone. Afterward, Willow didn't want to undergo more hospital examinations and desperately wanted to leave. Her parents swiftly brought her home. Back in her room, she carefully gathered every item Jasper had touched, refusing to let anyone take them away. Willow took out one of his shirts from the closet, held it in her arms, and cried uncontrollably. Elliot and Anastasia waited in the living room outside for a long time, but their daughter did not come out. Ellen also wanted to be with her, but Willow locked herself in her room. She was in so much pain that she could not control herself. In this very room, all the memories she had shared with Jasper surrounded her. It was as if she could turn around and see him sitting on the couch, working diligently, or she could close her eyes and feel his breath beside her. When she opened her eyes, she could see his deep gaze locked onto her. However, all that remained now was the cold air, and this feeling was driving her crazy. Her tears flowed incessantly, and her heart was bleeding. This sense of despair and helplessness enveloped her tightly. At the military hospital, Jasper had just regained consciousness. Antoine had been by his side all along and had just wanted to close his eyes for a while when he heard a shuffling. He opened his eyes and saw Jasper conscious. Jasper, you're awake, Antoine exclaimed as his eyes turned red. Jasper spoke hoarsely, I can't hear, uncle. Antoine immediately typed on his phone. Don't worry, it's temporary. You'll recover, is Willow okay? Jasper's voice was extremely hoarse. Antoine nodded. She's fine and doing well. You did an excellent job on this mission. Jasper closed his eyes, and the corners of his mouth lifted slightly. It seemed as though he did not care about his hearing loss and injuries, all that mattered was that Willow was safe. Antoine looked at him and felt a pang in his heart. This foolish nephew of his had indeed fallen deeply in love. Did Jasper not care about his well-being? It was heartbreaking for his family to see him like this. However, there was one thing Antoine was grateful for Jasper had not lost his memory, and his brain seemed to be intact, except for the hearing loss. He typed on his phone and showed it to him. Rest well, and don't overthink. Jasper nodded. At that moment, the world had become incredibly quiet, almost as if there were no sounds at all. After being pulled down by Calvin, Jasper did not fall into the sea along with him. Instead, he grabbed onto a rock halfway down, and when the explosion occurred, he lay flat on the rock and blocked the tremendous impact. As a result, the blast shattered the rock he clung to, and he fell into the sea. Had he not grabbed that rock and fallen into the sea with Calvin, he would have disappeared from this world. Antoine wrote many words on the phone and finally handed it to Jasper, who took over the phone and read them. Then, he looked up at his uncle. He made a serious gesture of refusing to negotiate with Jasper and indicated that the words he had typed on the phone were his orders. Jasper said hoarsely, the pressgraves are on board, too. Antoine nodded. Jasper suddenly shot up in a panic. How will Willow bear this? Antoine gently pushed him back down, then picked up the phone and wrote, you will have no contact with the pressgraves from now on. They will handle it. After Jasper read it, he closed his eyes, but the pain was still evident on his forehead. He could not imagine how much pain Willow would feel when she received this news. He could refrain from contacting or disappearing from her life, but he did not want to bring her a life of pain. Antoine typed another sentence. I will arrange for you to take a vacation and receive treatment. During this time, you must forget about her. 
After Jasper read it, he turned his face away. Antoine knew his decision was hard for his nephew to accept, but he had to do it. Soon, Sirius also arrived. Persuade him, will you? Antoine told him. He nodded and sat beside Jasper, relieved that everything seemed okay. Jasper had taken on all the dangers in this mission and saved his life. Sirius sensed that Jasper did not want to talk. Given his current condition, he could not communicate either. Hence, Sirius could only stay by his side and lend a hand when needed. Though the patient had just woken up, he fell asleep again due to mental exhaustion. Three days had passed in the blink of an eye. Willow had cried so much that her eyes were inflamed, and Anastasia had to call a doctor to the house to examine her. Her beautiful big eyes were bloodshot from lack of sleep. The entire Presgrave family was heartbroken, but they felt helpless. Meanwhile, in the hospital, Jasper was able to get out of bed and move around. Most of his time was spent sitting in the garden, and no one knew what he was thinking. Antoine had assigned men to keep an eye on him. During that time, he could not wander around freely, and Antoine had also confiscated his phones and laptops, not allowed to use any devices because they could affect his emotions. Especially now that Jasper could not contact Willow. He was certainly thinking about her, reminiscing many of their memories together. He had never known that once he left her, he would miss her so badly that he felt his love for her grew. It was as if she was the light of his life, and without her, his heart returned to darkness. He did not know the direction of his future or the meaning of his life. The fifth day arrived. Willow was about to head to Jasper's villa, having a premonition that he had not died. Everyone must have deceived me. There's no way he could have died so easily. She also wondered whether her father and brother had received incorrect information or if the organization had deliberately spread fake news that Jasper had passed away. He was so powerful and was the strongest man she had ever seen. No, he could not have left so abruptly. These days, she had been comforting herself with these thoughts he was alive, and it was misinformation. He should still be in the world, lying in some hospital. He has to be around still. Given the situation, Jared had sent eight bodyguards to escort her since she did not need her family to accompany her. She knew the access code and entered without allowing the bodyguards to follow. She walked through the place alone, and the flowers and plants seemed to have withered even more. Then, she arrived at Jasper's room, which had gathered some dust. That sight wrenched her heart as she sat on the couch, unable to hide her grief. You're alive. I believe you'll come back to me, Jasper. If you're still here, please come back to me." Willow spoke to the air, took a piece of paper from her bag, and placed it on the table. She knew that if Jasper were to return someday, he would see it. In the hospital, Jasper looked at the two guards standing not far away. They were sent by his uncle, and he urgently needed to know about Willow's situation. However, Antoine had been preventing him from doing so. The feeling of longing grew stronger. If he did not receive news about Willow, he knew he would go crazy. He could refrain from appearing before her, but he had to know her condition. He wanted to hear if she was doing well, if she was sick, or if she was eating properly. If she was fine, he would be prepared to withdraw from her life and would not disturb her anymore. He just needed to know these things for now. In actuality, it would be easy if Jasper wanted to lose the two guards. Two minutes later, he walked out of the lobby wearing a doctor's uniform and a mask. He shattered a car's window and quickly left the hospital. The entire area was under surveillance, but he did not hide. Instead, he headed straight for his nearby residence. When Antoine received the report from his subordinates, he saw a photo of Jasper leaving. He could not help but sigh, his nephew had slipped away once again. Quickly, he picked up his phone and left. By then, Jasper had returned to his home. He took a laptop and tried to log in, only to find that his account had been locked. That was a piece of cake for Jasper, who immediately hacked into someone else's account and used it to log into the satellite system. Soon, he began looking through the surveillance footage. He did not see any traces of Willow in Presgrave residence, so he immediately checked the surveillance in his villa. He merely wanted to know if she had been there, but when he checked his room, he was stunned. She was sitting on the couch in his room, her countenance much paler than usual. 
Although the footage was blurry, he could see that her eyes had turned red and swollen. She wiped her tears from time to time, looking like a beautiful yet lifeless puppet for a long while. Jasper's breaths quickened, his heart aching so much that he could not catch his breath. He quietly gazed at the girl through the lenses, heartbroken. However, at that moment, Willow's phone rang. She hastily wiped her tears and adjusted her expression before answering the call. Hello, Mom. I'll be right back. I'm fine. I just went out for a walk. She knew Anastasia had not eaten or slept for her sake in the past few days. Her mother had gotten much frailer, so she knew better than to make her worry even more. Although suffering in her heart, she tried to look happy before her family members. She could not let them suffer with her just because she was in pain, could she? All right, Mom. I'll be back soon. Don't worry about me. Willow pursed her lips and forced a smile. After hanging up, she picked up her bag and looked longingly at her surroundings, finally departing. Gazing at her figure, Jasper knew she had survived the worst period of her life. At least she listens to her family now. Just then, someone unlocked the room to his door before Antoine rushed in. When he saw his nephew on the couch, he said in exasperation, Can't you just talk to me about it? With that, he sighed again. He knew Jasper could not hear what he was saying, so he took out his phone and typed some words. You can rest at home, but promise me that you won't come into contact with anyone from the Presgrave family. Jasper was just done checking up on Willow and nodded at his uncle. Okay, I promise I'll give myself time. I booked an appointment with a specialist, so you'll get your ears checked tomorrow. Rest well, and don't overthink it. Antoine patted him. Jasper nodded. He could not meet Willow like this, anyway. He was not the perfect version of himself right now, and if he lost his hearing, he would have to live a brand new way. Perhaps he would not have to go on missions anymore, but that also meant he would become more redundant. I won't even be able to protect her or hear her voice. For the longest time, he believed he was out of Willow's league. Now, he started to feel inferior again. Perhaps Antoine's decision was right. Jasper should not be with Willow anymore because he might prevent her from leading a better life. She was the young lady of the Presgrave family who would fulfill all her desires. Her life would be wonderful even in the future. At that moment, Jasper was feeling a little down, and Antoine could see that as well. Picking up his phone, he typed out some words. Trust me, I'll make sure you recover. Jasper did not want his uncle to be worried about him, either. After all, Antoine had a more pivotal mission awaiting him. He nodded, signaling his trust to his uncle. In truth, Antoine could not take better care of Jasper, he was shouldering the burdens of the country. Just then, his phone rang. He glanced at it and then left. Jasper returned to his laptop and switched the screens. Cars from the Presgrave family were shown on the monitor, escorting Willow home. Although he could only see her through the screen, it was enough to comfort his heart. At least she's in one piece. When Willow arrived home, tears remained on her face, after which she took a tissue and dried her tears. Then, she forced a smile so she could talk peacefully to her family. Chapter 2401 For the past few days, her family had lived in pain because of her. She could not even hear laughter in the family anymore, wishing the gloomy air would fade away soon. Hence, no matter how heartbroken she was, she had to learn to face life calmly. She would do it even if there were no more joy in her life, where she could never recover from Jasper's departure. After all, this man had occupied her whole heart, a sacred place where no other man could squeeze his way in. With quick steps, Elliot hastily went over to them. When the bodyguard was about to open the car door, he waved them away and opened it himself. With reddened eyes, Willow smiled at her father. Dad. His heart ached as he reached out to pat her. Your mother made some of your favorite food. Come on, let's go in. Okay. With that, she held her father's arm as they entered the hall. Anastasia went out early in the morning to shop for the ingredients. Then, she busied herself in the kitchen from morning until then, desperately wanting her daughter to eat more. In just a few days, Willow had lost a few pounds. Her health would be at risk if she kept that up. With her baby in her arms, Ellen came over and greeted Willow. 
Looking at her adorable nephew, Willow also felt a little better. She held the baby, gazing at his cute face, and then planted a kiss on his little cheek. Seeing that her son could make Willow a little happier, Ellen left and worked on other things so that Willow could spend more time with her son. The baby was quite an effective cure for downcast hearts. He would giggle after someone played with him, and his chubby fingers would touch Willow's face as he babbled with an innocent voice. When Anastasia saw Willow playing with her grandson, she let out a sigh of relief as well. Elliot, who had been helping her since this morning, walked over. Wrapping his arms around his wife, he whispered, her mood has improved. Our baby girl has grown up. I didn't even notice that. Anastasia felt comforted. Her daughter was growing more mature, which meant she knew how to hide her feelings and deal with them herself. When Anastasia thought about it, her heart ached for her. Elliot lamented, yes, our daughter grew up in the blink of an eye. She was so carefree just a few months ago. Of course, Anastasia knew that girls would learn to grow up when they met a man they loved. With emotional independence came a new wall between her and her parents, where not all grievances needed to be shared. I was on a call with Richard just now. Jasper has recovered, but there's something wrong with his hearing. He needs treatment. Poor child. If you have a chance to thank him, please do. Now, Antoine is hiding him and preventing us from contacting each other. If there's a chance in the future, we should thank him properly. I hope Willow will get over this soon and return to normal life. She still has a long road ahead of her, said Anastasia. As a mother, she only had one wish to see her children happy. Elliot nodded. I'll look for a suitable partner for her. Anastasia leaned into his embrace. At that moment, she felt calm and quiet. He lowered his head and kissed her hair. You've worked hard. At noon, Willow felt her appetite returning as she enjoyed her mother's cooking. She had also finished the soup her father ladled out for her. Due to that, Anastasia knew she would have to be in charge of cooking for the foreseeable future. Now, they only had servants who came to help out at specific times and would not need the others for the time being. She had also heard about the incident with Sasha, whom she still felt sorry for. Although Sasha almost harmed her daughter, her family was also involved, despite being innocent. At last, Sasha also paid for her crimes with her life. Anastasia's heart was heavy when she thought about it. Every life mattered, and none was less deserving than the other. Also, Sasha cared the most about her son and husband. Hence, the Pressgraves had given them their due compensation. In the afternoon, Willow received an invitation to a meeting at the museum at 2 p.m. The batch of cultural artifacts she submitted last time was already processed. More than 10 of those artifacts would be exhibited in the museum. As the greatest contributor, Willow naturally had to go and take a look. They even had an opening ceremony. Her heart ached terribly. The artifacts were closely linked to Jasper, but now, she was the only one who could go to the museum. She wished he were there as well. Willow had a strong feeling that Jasper was still alive. Perhaps he couldn't meet her right now, but she believed that he was still alive. Her father, brother, and mother were calm when they mentioned him. According to what she knew of her family, they would look at least a little sad if Jasper had truly passed away. At that moment, Willow couldn't find any answers, but her heart had already given her one. If she kept waiting, he would appear once again. She trusted that he would. This was her reason for staying strong and courageous right now. She had hope. For the rest of her life, as long as Jasper was still alive, she would find him. They would meet again someday. Perhaps it might take five years, or ten years, or twenty. She could wait. When Elliot heard about the matter, he went to talk to his daughter. Willow, if you don't want to attend the meeting at the museum, I can cancel it for you. Elliot was worried that this matter would remind Willow of Jasper. She might break down. Willow, however, was calm. She shook her head and said, Dad, you don't have to cancel it for me. I want to attend it. Also, I can have a change of scenery while I'm at it. At that, Elliot said, I'll send someone to escort you there. You're not allowed to say no to this. You know that I can't afford to let you take risks again. Okay, I understand. I won't make you guys worry again, Willow said. 
Then, Elliot went downstairs to give orders to the bodyguards. Willow dressed up and set out. The museum was closed today, so the whole building was silent. Sitting in the meeting room, Willow listened as they explained and introduced the artifacts. Just as expected, she couldn't help but think back on those days she went to see. Those days were dangerous yet beautiful. Jasper's face came to life in her mind. She remembered the sea breeze blowing as he looked at her with narrowed eyes. There was joy in his dark eyes. She believed that there was admiration and love in her eyes when she looked at him. Miss Presgrave, would you like to say a word? Someone was asking her a question. Willow instantly returned to her senses. She blinked. What? Would you like to say a word? Willow stood up. Noticing that one person's name was missing from the credits, she spoke up. Help me add another name in the credits. Oh, did we forget a contributor's name? The chairman of the museum was shocked. They were very careful about these things, after all. Yes, you did. The name is Jasper Wyatt. Please add the name next to mine, thanks, Willow said to the chairman. The chairman immediately asked his assistant to handle this matter. He said apologetically, I'm so sorry, Miss Presgrave. My staff must have overlooked something. No, this has nothing to do with your staff. Willow smiled. It was because this man had willingly given up on it as he refused to reveal himself, but it all worked out now because she could take things into her own hands. In the future, whenever the artifacts were introduced, everyone would see that the greatest contributor was Willow Presgrave, accompanied by the name Jasper Wyatt. It was quite meaningful. Willow took part in the opening ceremony. She stood in the center. She looked beautiful, innocent, and youthful as the breeze picked up. Even photographers kept taking shots from various angles so that the greatest contributor would look great in photos. Miss Presgrave, I will exhibit our photos in the museum, but they will also be published in the newspapers and on the internet. If you don't wish to make an appearance in this area, we can arrange that. Willow smiled heartily. No need. You can go ahead and publish it. Thank you for your cooperation, Miss Presgrave. She really hoped that the specific person could see it. If he goes online, he will surely see me. After a series of photo shoots, at 4.30 p.m., her bodyguard escorted her home. On the way, she asked the bodyguard to change the route to Jasper's house. Whenever she had time, she would come here to sit, and she would also have people clean up this place periodically. Whether that man was still alive or not, she hoped to preserve this place forever. She sat on the couch in Jasper's villa, looking at the note she left two days ago. Once again, she took out a pen and wrote a sentence. I miss you, Jasper. If you are truly alive, please give me some hints, okay? I have no other requests. I just want to know if you are still alive. After she finished writing, she signed it with, The One Who Loves You. She stayed there for a while until she realized it was getting late. If she didn't go back soon, her mother would worry about her, so she got up and left. At the same time, in a mysterious base, Jasper was still in a state of recuperation. His seniors and juniors had visited him one after another. Luckily, he had no restrictions on using the internet here. He quietly turned on the computer. The only way he could learn about the outside world was through the internet, and the thing he most wanted to know was how Willow was doing. Checking for her updates was also the only thing he wanted to do. Sure enough, he found that she had attended a museum exhibition today. As he looked at the photos of the girl smiling at the camera, a smile tugged on his lips uncontrollably. Seeing her doing well made him happy. Even though he still couldn't hear anything, his heart was filled with warmth because the person he cared about was doing well. He then switched the surveillance of his villa. Though he knew Willow would not go to his house again, he still wanted to take a look. As he switched to the surveillance in his living room, he immediately spotted the note on the couch. At once, his heart trembled, and he zoomed in on it. The moment he saw the words on it, his heart ached. Willow still wants to know whether I'm alive or not. Does she know I'm still alive? At this thought, he couldn't help but smile wryly. Didn't Uncle explain the situation to the Presgrave family? Seeing those words, he couldn't help but feel torn inside. Should I let her know I'm still alive? But she's doing so well now. Is it right for me to enter her life again? 
The Presgrave family is definitely working hard to protect her. If I reappear in her life, it won't be fair to them. When he shut down the computer, his eyes were clear and calm. He was resolute in dealing with all matters, except when it came to Willow. In her case, he became indecisive about everything. On the weekend, the Presgrave family went on a vacation together to their private island. Jared and Ellen stayed in another villa to enjoy some private space while Willow spent time with her parents. In the morning, she went jogging with her family to relax, and in the afternoon, she went fishing in the sea with her father and elder brother. As night fell, she took a stroll under the moonlit trees with her mother. Willow felt that they all wanted to see her happy, so she tried her best to show that she was happy. After returning from this week-long vacation, she immediately went to Jasper's villa. She noticed that the notes had accumulated a layer of faint dust, but she hadn't received the response she was hoping for. She couldn't help but write another note. Jasper, send me flowers if you are still alive. Otherwise, I'll just marry someone randomly. At the end, she drew an angry emoticon. Though she knew she was being a bit foolish by doing something this silly, for her, these were signs of hope and a form of consolation. After she finished writing the note, she left the villa. She then waited at home, wondering if someone would really send her flowers. On the other hand, Jasper also checked the house's surveillance regularly. For a whole week, he kept watching. He had also found out that the Pressgraves were not in the city, they had gone on vacation elsewhere. Unexpectedly, Jasper saw Willow's message again today. So, he rewound the footage by two hours, and that was when he saw her car parked outside his house and her skillfully entering his home. She first looked around as if checking for surveillance cameras, but he had installed them discreetly, so she couldn't find them at all. Then, she sat down and took out a piece of paper from her bag to write a note. His pupils contracted sharply when he zoomed in on the camera and read the sentence that she wrote. Is she really going to marry someone randomly? Just to spite me. Where did she find out that I'm still alive? The Pressgraves will definitely keep this secret, and their bodyguards, will never tell her without permission. Watching her draw an angry emoji, he couldn't help but be amused for a few seconds, but then, he pursed his lips, locking onto that sentence and feeling a tightening in his heart. Is she really going to marry someone randomly? After Willow returned to the Presgrave residence, she waited for three days, but no one sent her flowers. This disappointed her. She was only joking, but suddenly, she wanted to take this joke a step further. So, during dinner, she asked her elder brother, Jared, do you know any outstanding young men? Introduce one to me. Instantly, the people at the table all stared at her in astonishment. Elliot and Anastasia exchanged a glance. What? Has our daughter finally come to her senses? Likewise, Jared secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Willow seems to have let go of Jasper. Does this mean she's ready to enter a new relationship? I do, of course. I know many outstanding men. Tell me your preferences, and I'll find someone for you, he said with a smile. She propped her chin up and thought seriously before replying, I like tall, handsome, and charismatic men. At her words, he immediately thought of one of his juniors. He had just returned to the country to take over the family business and was 27 years old, tall, handsome, warm, and capable. Well, I have a junior. I've known him for many years, and he's excellent. I'll introduce you to him. With a nod, she said, okay, I'm interested. Please introduce us as soon as possible, Jared. Sure, I'll introduce you to him tomorrow. He's currently in the country, and I'm sure he'll like you too. Willow smiled. Okay. After dinner, Anastasia and Elliot were chatting in their room. She felt that something was off with their daughter, so she turned to her husband and asked, what's going on with Willow? Why does she suddenly want to start dating? Elliot couldn't figure it out either. Didn't our daughter really like Jasper? It hasn't even been half a month, and she's already ready to jump into another relationship. This change had caught him off guard as well. Maybe she wants to use a new relationship to forget about the previous one, he suggested. She thought about it and realized it made sense. Girls often use this method to force themselves to move on from their previous relationships. Maybe you're right. Let's get Jared to introduce someone to her. His friends should be reliable. 
I'll keep an eye on the guy too, Elliot said. He would need to thoroughly check on anyone who wanted to become a part of the Presgrave family. The next day at noon, Jared arranged a meeting with his junior, and Willow also came to the company to meet him. This junior was named Leslie Payne. He was handsome, warm, and fit the criteria for a handsome man. He had already heard about Willow, who had recently made headlines in the news. This achievement was not something just anyone could accomplish. When he saw her photo, he already had a good impression of her. So, when he met her in person, he was instantly excited, like how teenage boys were, for she completely met his highest standards of beauty. Willow, this is Leslie Payne, my junior. Jared hadn't expected that he would someday become his sister's matchmaker. Hello, Miss Presgrave. It's an honor to meet you. Hello, Mr. Payne. Willow sized him up. He's indeed very handsome. At the same time, she couldn't help feeling a bit guilty because she was using him to achieve her other purpose, not because she genuinely liked him. Her heart could no longer hold anyone else, except for that man who had disappeared without a trace. I still have a meeting. You guys chat while you eat. Jared decided to leave. He was quite satisfied with this young man, who had also been thoroughly investigated. After Jared left, he reported to his parents. By now, Elliot had thoroughly researched Leslie's family history, and it seemed that he came from a respectable background. After Willow and Leslie finished their meal, they headed to a nearby cafe for their date. Leslie sat on the sofa, and Willow took the initiative to sit next to him. This made him so happy that he couldn't stop smiling. As Willow moved closer, he felt nervous, his palms even slightly sweaty. Then Willow said to him, let's take some selfies. You can put your arm around my shoulder. Leslie immediately placed his arm around her shoulder, and the two of them leaned in for a photo. They looked like a sweet couple who was a perfect match. After taking the photos, Willow said to Leslie, let's make it a regular thing to meet up in the future. Sounds great. Leslie was also very happy. Leslie wanted to drive her home, but Willow declined. She had driven herself here, and this time, she hadn't brought any bodyguards with her. She quickly headed toward Jasper's villa. On the way, she printed out a few of the photos. In the pictures, she and Leslie looked incredibly compatible. Back at the villa, she arranged the three photos on the table and continued to write a note. Jasper, do you think my blind date is handsome? He really likes me, but I really like you. If you don't show up soon, I might just marry him and forget about you. After finishing the note, she added, you don't have to appear in front of me, and you don't need to send me flowers. All you have to do is send me the number 520 at any time within the next three days. I just need to know that you're still alive. Willow finished writing but was still reluctant to leave. After all, it was still early, and she was feeling a bit tired. She lay down on the sofa for a nap. At the base, Jasper, who had just finished lunch and returned to his ward, couldn't help but glance at the computer next to him. He let out a faint sigh. His usual self-discipline seemed to disappear when it came to Willow. Whenever he thought of her, his mind became a mess. Jasper picked up the laptop and continued to access the surveillance network to check on Willow's activities. She hadn't updated her social media in a long time. However, what he saw in front of him now was Willow's latest post. It was a photo of her with a young man, both of them smiling sweetly. Willow was practically leaning into his arms, and the man had his arm around her shoulders. Jasper's breath hitched. This girl really didn't waste any time. Willow had added a caption. When you meet someone you like, just hold on. Jasper tensed up. He let out a breath and stared at the photo, unable to tear his gaze away from it. He then had another thought and exited Willow's social media, checking his own villa surveillance. But what he saw made his heart soften to the extreme. Willow was asleep on the sofa in his house, and he wasn't sure how long she had been curled up there. Jasper couldn't help but reach toward the computer screen, as if wanting to touch her. Willow's curled up form looked like she was cold. It was already early winter, but she hadn't covered herself with anything. This girl still hadn't learned to take care of herself. Jasper felt a pang of tenderness in his heart. He then noticed the photos on the table and her written note. He immediately zoomed in to get a better look. 
After reading, his heart ached so much that it throbbed. The man in the photo was just someone she had met to spite him. She still liked him. Jasper held his phone and found Willow's number. After typing 520, he closed his eyes. When he opened them again, he immediately checked the information about the man who took photos with Willow. After he finished the search, everything about Leslie appeared in front of him clearly. This was a man with an outstanding and impeccable resume. He had a height of 186 centimeters, good looks, and his genes were also excellent. Jasper also checked one more thing, which was Leslie's history of staying in hotels. Clearly, Leslie had no history of scandals or staying in hotels with questionable women. He was a young man from a wealthy family, raised and protected in a similar manner as Willow. Jasper's gaze remained fixed on the man in the photo. In the depths of his eyes, a complex and profound light flickered, containing emotions of envy and admiration. Yes, Jasper envied this man because he and Willow were truly a perfect match. They were the ones truly suited for each other, while he had too many constraints. Plus, with his current hearing problems, he knew he couldn't give Willow a happy future. On the other hand, the man in the photo, with his perfect credentials, was the one who could provide her with a peaceful and stable life. She wouldn't have to live in fear anymore. Jasper decided to delete the three numbers 520 that he had typed on his phone. He placed the phone beside him and turned on the villa surveillance camera. He saw that Willow had packed up and was about to leave. She glanced at the note on the table and then turned to leave. Jasper continued to monitor the video feeds along the way to see her off. He watched as she entered the Presgrave residence, and only then did he finally breathe a sigh of relief. At this moment, a figure walked in from outside. It was Jasper's former colleague, Amy. She had just returned from a mission and, upon hearing about Jasper's situation, hadn't even reported for duty before she rushed over just to see him. She didn't believe that Jasper had lost his hearing. In her eyes, this man was an unstoppable force. How could he have lost his hearing? Amy walked into the ward and sat next to Jasper. She called out to him, Jasper, can you hear me? In just a few days, Jasper had already learned some basic lip reading. He looked at Amy and quickly understood what she was saying. He shook his head in response. I can't hear. Amy's eyes welled up with tears. How did this happen? Tell Mr. Wyatt to find the best specialists to treat you. I don't want anything to happen to you. Seeing Amy so upset, Jasper spoke up to comfort her. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Amy's eyes flickered with a hint of resentment. Jasper had risked his life to save Willow. Why did she always bring trouble to him? Now that Jasper's hearing was impaired, he wouldn't be able to continue his work. He was so talented, and he shouldn't have to live like this. At this moment, Antoine knocked on the door and walked in. Amy immediately stood up. Mr. Wyatt, I need to talk to my nephew for a moment. You can go write up the mission report, Antoine said to her. Amy looked back at Jasper with reluctance. Jasper, from now on, I'll take care of you. No matter what your future holds, I'll be with you. Amy left, and Antoine's gaze fell on his nephew. After sitting down, Antoine took out a report for him. Jasper took the report. It was an assessment of his hearing impairment, and the chances of recovery were only 30%. However, there was another option, which was to wait for a donor. I've already started looking for a donor for you, Jasper. Don't lose hope. I will make sure you're cured. Antoine typed on his phone. Jasper felt like resting. He said to his uncle, Uncle, there's no rush. I can take a break for now. I'll give you plenty of time to rest. If you don't want to retire in the future, I'll fight for that for you too. Antoine typed in reply. Jasper could completely retire from this line of work and do what he truly wanted. Jasper shook his head. I don't want to leave for now. He had an attachment to this place it was where he had grown up and where he had accepted his missions. Only here could he find peace of mind. Antoine nodded and wrote, then rest well. Don't concern yourself with Miss Presgrave unless it's necessary. As Antoine handed the phone over to him, his gaze turned slightly serious. He could see all of Jasper's traces on the internet, so whatever he did or looked up, his subordinates would report it to him. Jasper lowered his head. I understand. 
Back at her home, Willow didn't feel like doing anything. She stared at her phone, waiting for a message. She didn't know if she would receive it, but she wouldn't give up. Just then, a message notification sounded. Willow's eyes widened in happiness as she quickly picked up her phone to check. However, the message was from Leslie. Willow, what are you up to? Leslie took the initiative to start a conversation. The initial joy in Willow's eyes was instantly replaced by a sense of disappointment. She replied to Leslie and continued to wait for another message. Tomorrow, I have a club event. It's a lot of fun. Would you like to come with me? Leslie extended the invitation. Willow thought for a moment, feeling a mix of frustration and resignation. She replied, sure, I'd like to join. That's great. I'll pick you up tomorrow. Leslie sent a smiley face. Willow responded, all right, see you tomorrow. She wasn't in the mood to chat right now. Then, she looked at the time it was already 11 at night. She didn't know if she would receive the message she was waiting for. Feeling a bit thirsty, Willow got up and went downstairs to get some water. At this moment, she saw her elder brother and father downstairs, discussing company business. Willow couldn't help but crouch down beside the stairs, eavesdropping on their conversation. After all, she had done this kind of thing many times before and had gained some experience. Naturally, they didn't notice her. Their discussion about work was rather boring to her. She couldn't understand a word of what they were saying about company operations and project development. She often wondered how her mother managed an international jewelry store so successfully, while her father and elder brother were both business geniuses. It seemed like it was just her who hadn't inherited the business genes. Willow felt quite helpless about it. Just when she was getting bored and thinking of going, Upstairs with the bottle of water, she suddenly heard Jared's voice change as he asked their father a question. Dad, have you talked to Mr. Leod? Is Jasper recovering? Elliot's voice came through. Yes, I've talked to him. He said Jasper has basically recovered, but the Wyatt family doesn't want any further contact with our family. Willow's eyes widened suddenly. She was overcome with excitement, and she almost let out a surprised exclamation. However, she quickly covered her mouth to prevent herself from making any noise, because she wanted to eavesdrop on more of the conversation. However, her heart was screaming with joy. Hell was still alive, she just knew it. Tears of joy welled up in Willow's eyes, though she was smiling. Her eyes sparkled like crescent moons. This was the happiest she had been in a long time. Even though she heard her father say that the Wyatt family didn't want Jasper to have any contact with her, it didn't matter. As long as he was alive, there was hope of meeting again. At this moment, Jared sighed. So, it seems we have no way to repay him. He sacrificed so much for Willow, and he almost lost his life. With his status, even if we wanted to repay him, he wouldn't accept it. That's true. We've been keeping this from Willow, but I'm worried that she'll find out one day. When that happens, let's just take it one step at a time, Elliot said. Just then, his phone rang, and he went out to answer the call. Jared checked the time and went over to the elevator. Soon, he went up to the third floor. Seeing the hall quiet down, Willow quietly hurried up to her room. Finally, she could lie happily on her bed, Barry, herself in the blanket, and let her happiness out. Jasper, you dare lie to me. You dare not come to see me. When I find you, I'll make sure you regret it. Willow lamented in her heart. Clearly, he was safe and sound, yet he didn't contact her. Did he want to just leave her behind? Taking a deep breath, Willow suddenly touched, the necklace around her neck. The tracker in this necklace still belonged to him, so wherever she went, he could track her. Jasper, whether you want to see me or not, I won't let you leave me. She had finally gotten a definite message that he was still alive. It was the best gift Willow received today. She couldn't sleep at all tonight, and stayed awake until morning. Anastasia brought breakfast to her daughter's room in the morning. Seeing her daughter still asleep, she couldn't help but sigh. It seemed her daughter had lost sleep again over matters of the heart. Willow slept until the afternoon before getting up. As soon as she got up, she was starving. She couldn't continue like this. She needed to regain her strength and look her best for Jasper's return. 
Anastasia was in a meeting downstairs with two managers. Just as they were discussing, the voice of a young girl interrupted them, Mom, I'm hungry. Is there anything to eat? Anastasia's voice was cut off. She turned to see her daughter stretching lazily while coming downstairs. Even though Willow had gotten up so late, Anastasia was suddenly filled with joy. Her daughter finally said she was hungry and was starting to act more like herself. I'll get you something to eat right away, Anastasia said happily. She turned to the two managers and said, you can go back now. The two managers immediately stood up and left. Anastasia looked at her daughter bathing in sunlight, feeling a bit dazed. It seemed like she hadn't seen her daughter so relaxed in a long time. Willow came over to her with a smiling face and hooked her arm. Mom, what are you looking at? At the sight of her daughter acting cute, it was as if she was no longer affected by Jasper's supposed passing. Anastasia felt a sudden sense of relief. It's nothing. I'll get you something to eat. Willow nodded. She lay down on the sofa in the hall, picked up her phone, and started browsing through variety shows. The sadness and pain in Willow's heart were swept away. As long as she knew Jasper was alive and well in this world, she would be at ease. In the kitchen, Anastasia called her husband to tell him about their daughter's current situation. Elliot was surprised to hear it, but as parents, this was what they wished to see the most. After eating, Willow said she was going out. The security team immediately arranged a convoy to take her, and this time, Willow went to Jasper's villa. Elliot knew about this, but he allowed his daughter to do whatever she pleased, as long as it made her happy. Willow entered Jasper's villa alone and took out a piece of paper. On it, she wrote in large letters, Jasper, I know you're still alive. You have three days to contact me, or I'll get engaged. After finishing, Willow looked up with an irritated expression and left. In the evening, Leslie took Willow to attend a private dinner, which was organized by the Luxury Car Club. Willow's arrival did spark interest among many wealthy heirs. They knew that being with Willow would be a great boon for their families. Willow was a bit distracted. She occasionally checked her phone, hoping for something, but every time, she gritted her teeth and locked her phone. Whose call are you waiting for, Willow? Leslie had been observing her for some time now. Willow smiled and shook her head. I'm not. I was just checking the time. Suddenly, she suggested, let's dance. His eyes lit up. I'd love to. They headed to the dance floor. Then, Willow approached a young woman and whispered, can you help me record a video of us dancing? The said young woman was more than happy to help. Willow and Leslie danced to the music. Both had been trained in dance from a young age, allowing them to captivate the attention of everyone on the dance floor. When the song ended, she reclaimed her phone and checked the video. With a mischievous smirk, she promptly uploaded it to her social media and eagerly awaited a message from Jasper. She was resolute that if he didn't reach out within three days, she'd do whatever it took to force him out of hiding. Over at the base, Jasper had just returned to his room after completing his training routine. Right now, his daily routine was rather monotonous, with his primary focus being, checking up on Willow. He yearned to know what she was up to each day and whether she was happy. With his hacking expertise, he had access to virtually anything on the internet. Hence, spying on someone's life was a piece of cake for him. He decided to check the security footage of his villa. He was taken aback by the discovery of a new note. He zoomed in for a closer look, and his eyes widened in shock as he read it. Willow knows I'm still alive. How did she find out? Jasper started to panic. He rewound the footage and saw how pissed Willow had been when she wrote the note. He chuckled and thought, is she trying to bait me into seeing her? She's using a rather childish method. Around 9 p.m., Willow returned home. At that moment, Elliot and Anastasia were sitting in the living room waiting for her. They heard their daughter humming a cheerful tune and couldn't help but wonder why she was so happy. Elliot and Anastasia exchanged curious glances, wondering what had brought about this sudden happiness. They recalled how upset Willow had been just the previous night. They asked if her newfound happiness might be connected to her developing a crush on Leslie. As Willow entered the living room, she noticed her parents and tried to hide her awkwardness by biting her lip. Mom, Dad, she greeted sweetly. Why are you still up? 
How can we sleep when you're not home? Anastasia replied, taking Willow's purse and observing her daughter's bright eyes. Did you have fun with Leslie today? Willow nodded. Yeah, I had a good time. We even danced together. Anastasia was surprised by Willow's initiative to dance with a guy and thought her daughter must really like Leslie. Hence, she felt a sense of relief, confident that she didn't need to worry anymore. Elliot and Anastasia were more than happy to have Leslie as their son-in-law. They could find no fault with his family background, character, and capabilities. He was also Jared's good friend, so he would undoubtedly blend right into the family. Mom, Dad, I'm heading to my room now. You guys should head to bed, too. Willow grabbed her purse and hurried up the stairs. Anastasia exhaled in relief. She sat down beside Elliot and rested her head against his shoulder. I can finally rest easy now. Willow's all grown up now. She has her own thoughts and opinions. We shouldn't try to interfere with her life. Elliot had finally learned to let go and allow his daughter to find her own happiness. The moment Willow returned to her room, she immediately logged into her social media account. Many people had watched the video, but she was particularly interested to know if Jasper had seen it. Therefore, Willow began to check every single account. She didn't stop even when her eyes started to water. After reviewing everyone who viewed her video, she found no trace of Jasper. Only then did it dawn on Willow that Jasper was a computer and technology expert, making her realize he could have viewed her social media posts without leaving a trace. This realization annoyed her. She rubbed her eyes and decided to tell Leslie the truth another day, planning to ask him to stage an act with her. She was determined to force Jasper out of the shadows. She resolved that if he genuinely didn't care about her, so be it. She'd let go, too, but she couldn't help wondering if he would show up if he did care about her. In the middle of the night, Amy sneaked into Jasper's room. He had been struggling with sleepless nights, and it was taking a toll on his health. Hence, Antoine had insisted Jasper take a powerful sleeping pill. At that moment, Jasper was in a deep slumber when she slipped in. She didn't hide the affection in her eyes as she stared at his face. Her attention eventually fixated on his slender lips, and a selfish desire began to consume her thoughts. She wanted to get a taste of his lips. She swallowed and bit her lip as she reached out to hold his hand. Just then, he grabbed her by the hand as he murmured in his dreams, Willow, Willow. The man repeatedly called for Willow as he clutched Amy's hand tightly. It was clear that he had mistaken Amy for Willow. Although Jasper was holding Amy's hand, she felt deeply hurt that he was calling out another woman's name. She couldn't help but feel angry that Willow was the only one on his mind, even though she had been right beside him all along. She wondered if he knew that she had been in love with him for five years. Amy's heart was filled with bitterness. Suddenly, she found herself resenting why Willow couldn't simply remain a well-off socialite and avoid entangling herself with someone like him. Eventually, she let go of his hand because she was unable to bear hearing him call out for Willow. Just as she was about to leave the room, she turned toward the man and muttered, I won't let you be bewitched by her, Jasper. I'll make her leave you. Back in her room, she got her laptop out and looked up Willow's social media accounts. When she saw Willow's active life and her involvement with a rich and handsome young man, Amy sneered, doubting if Willow was worthy of Jasper's love. Is this the woman you love with all your heart, Jasper? The woman you're willing to risk your life for? She doesn't care about you at all. As Amy went through Willow's social media posts, she assumed Willow was one of those wealthy socialites with a sordid private life. A woman like her isn't good enough for Jasper. Was such a fool. Why did I give up on him? I should fight for him. What if he does end up being mine? Amy thought as she glared at Willow's smiling face on the screen. I'm going to warn Willow and tell her to stay away from him. At that thought, she started typing a message. She sent the message without knowing about Antoine's plan and Willow's unawareness of Jasper's survival. Meanwhile, Willow was in her room, browsing the internet, even though it was already 3 a.m. She was waiting for Jasper to show up. When she heard a beep, she received a text message that left her stunned. Stay away from Jasper, Willow. Stop hurting him. Willow's chest tightened. She wondered who the sender was, so she quickly typed out a question. Who are you? 
You've seen me before. I'm Amy Hawkins. Stunned, Willow recalled Amy's face. It's her. Is she with Jasper right now? At that thought, she immediately bombarded Amy with questions. How's Jasper? Is he badly injured? Amy's expression darkened. She had only intended to warn Willow to stay away from Jasper, not to become her source of information. Chapter 2411 Jasper's condition has nothing to do with you. I'm just here to warn you to stay away from him. Nevertheless, Willow was too anxious not to press on. I'm begging you. Please just tell me how he's doing. I'm very worried about him. Please, Miss Hawkins. I'm begging you. Amy snorted and responded, If you want him to stay alive and well, you should stay away from him for good. Don't ever look for him again. Willow's heart squeezed painfully when she saw those words. She was aware of Amy's feelings for Jasper, so she knew it was understandable that the woman resented her. Please take good care of him, Amy. Willow was utterly defeated. She's right. I'm always the reason why Jasper gets hurt. It's my fault. I have no right to ask anything of him. Amy's response came back, as if I need you to tell me that. I knew him first. I love him more than you do. Willow's breath caught in her throat. After reading Amy's text, she sighed. That's right. It doesn't matter who's beside him. All that matters is that there's someone there taking care of him. Can you tell me how he's doing, Miss Hawkins? I promise to stay away from him, but I want to know how he's doing. Willow sent out another heartfelt plea. Alas, Amy disappeared without responding to that. Even though Willow tried to send more texts, Amy didn't answer any of them. Willow stared at her screen. Even though she was disappointed, at least she was certain that Jasper was alive. He's alive, but just how badly injured is he? It finally dawned on Willow just how big the world was. She didn't have the ability to find anyone. She couldn't find Jasper. She could only wait until he returned, but would he? Amy closed her laptop. She realized how much of a bother Willow was as the latter kept pestering her with questions about Jasper's condition. It annoyed her. I certainly won't tell her anything about Jasper's condition. Let her worry her heart out. Still, Amy sighed. Jasper kept calling Willow's name in his dream just now. It's obvious just how much he cares about her. We'll even have a chance. It was morning. Jasper opened his eyes and glanced to the side of the bed. He felt as if he did hold a person's hand last night. He thought it was Willow's, but he couldn't tell if it had only been a dream or not. Therefore, when he opened his eyes and saw the empty room, his heart felt empty again. Just then, Antoine came in. He had been passing by and wanted to say a few words to Jasper. Antoine didn't close the door behind him. Amy came along and was just about to head in when she saw Antoine, so she waited outside instead. All of a sudden, she heard Antoine saying angrily, you're not allowed to leave the base. You can't go anywhere in this condition. Amy jumped in fright. She looked through the glass window and saw Jasper and Antoine staring at each other. Jasper looked frustrated. Antoine was so furious that he seemed to have forgotten that Jasper couldn't hear anything. He continued, didn't I tell you to stop having any contact with the press graves? Why did you insist on seeing them anyway? You and that young lady from the Presgrave family are not meant to be, do you hear me? He was mad because he nearly lost his nephew. In this line of work, being emotional was a death sentence. It would only hurt Jasper. At the same time, Willow would be his weakness too. He could end up losing his life at any given moment if he couldn't remain cold and unfeeling while on the job. After overhearing everything, Amy couldn't stop herself from smirking. It turned out that Antoine didn't want Jasper to get involved with the press graves either. It doesn't matter how much Jasper likes Willow. There's no way he can be with her. Jasper closed his eyes. He didn't refute Antoine's words, but he didn't agree with him either. Antoine shot Jasper one last piercing glare before leaving in a huff. Amy quickly hid in a corner. Once Antoine left, Amy came back out and went over to check on Jasper. Jasper was on the settee. He was dressed in gray. Even though he had lost his hearing, he still radiated strength, the air around him sharp. Amy took a seat beside him and gave him a gentle look. Jasper looked away, immersed in his thoughts. Amy picked up a notebook and wrote, Listen to your uncle, Jasper. Don't make him mad. 
Jasper looked at the message and went back to his thoughts. Amy wrote, aside from the organization, you're the closest person to him. He's scared of losing you again. Jasper glanced at the notebook again. He knew why his uncle did this, but that man had no idea how he was feeling. Willow already found a new lover, you know that. Amy scrolled through the gallery and placed her phone before Jasper. Jasper looked at the photo, but he wasn't agitated. He knew the relationship Willow shared with this man. Amy smiled and then wrote, In my opinion, he didn't like you that much if she fell for another man that quickly. Jasper raised his head and sternly said, You don't know her. Don't slander her. Amy paused for a moment before she chortled. She wrote, Jasper, your hearing is damaged, and yet she's happily dating someone else. I'm just feeling for you. Jasper shot Amy a warning glare. He would not allow anyone to slander Willow. Amy's heart sank. She sighed and wrote, forget about her, Jasper. You and her don't make a good match. We are. We can be partners and a couple. Jasper looked at the message, and he shook his head. Adamantly, he said, I will not fall in love with anyone but her. Stop wasting your time on me. After that, he left. Amy did not look happy at all. She couldn't believe Jasper was still obsessed with Willow. What part of her is better than me? Willow had lunch with Leslie. Seeing that there was something on Willow's mind, Leslie asked, What's wrong, Willow? Is something bothering you? Willow raised her head. Solemnly, she said, Sorry, Leslie, but, I lied. I have someone I like. I can't date you, I'm sorry. Leslie paused for a moment. He could feel that she didn't like him, but he liked her. Tell me about your crush, said Leslie. Willow then told him about her and Jasper's story. Leslie was a little surprised. He didn't expect someone that remarkable to be around Willow. Willow didn't tell him who he was, but Leslie could imagine the kind of man that person was. He got hurt because of me. I can't face him anymore, but I want to see him too. I don't know what to do. You dated me to rile him up so he would see you. Leslie asked. Willow nodded. That was the plan, but it's useless. He still didn't show up. Don't give up. I'll help you. Just tell me what to do. Really? Willow looked at him gratefully. Leslie smiled. We can't be lovers, but I'm still your brother's junior. You're like a sister to me. Of course, I'll help. Willow just wanted to put this to the test and see if Jasper would show up. She was going to hold an engagement party. If he wouldn't show up, then she would stop forcing him to. She said, I need you to help me with an act, Leslie. Can you? Leslie nodded. Sure. What's the act? After Willow told him about her plan, he nodded without hesitation. Sure, I can do that and see if he'll show up. No matter what happened between you two, at least you should talk it out. Willow nodded. Jasper should show up and tell her if he didn't want to be with her, not hide in the dark and avoid her. It was tormenting for her. If he didn't want to be with her, she would try to forget about him. Willow was someone who could let the past go if she wanted to. When she went back home that afternoon, she told her parents about the engagement party. She said she liked Leslie and wanted to get engaged to him as soon as possible. Anastasia and Elliot were shocked. She's getting engaged all of a sudden. And in three days. Are you sure you want to do this, Willow? Anastasia looked at her daughter. Leslie was a brilliant man, but they had to spend more time together to see if they could get along. Yeah, I am, Mom. I like him a lot. I'd like to get engaged first and then start dating him, said Willow. She couldn't let her parents see through that plan, or it would be worthless. Did Leslie agree to this? He did, said Willow. Leslie was willing to help, so he was playing along too. I think you should try going on more dates. Before doing this, Willow, advised Elliot. He didn't want his daughter to suffer in the future. I know it's sudden, you guys, but I'm serious. Willow looked at her parents earnestly. Anastasia and Elliot didn't think she was lying, so they agreed. Fine, we'll do this, then. Send me a picture of the invites once you have printed them, Mom. The engagement party came right out of left field, catching all news outlets by surprise. They only knew about it the same day it was decided. Right away, they switched out the headlines for this latest news. Willow sat before her computer, excited and a little nervous. 
she was going really far just to force Jasper out of hiding, and she would take any consequences that came along with it. She just wanted to see him, even if it meant he would curse her. She didn't want much. All she needed was to see him. The marriage rattled the city at first and then the whole nation. Amy found out about it as well. She stared at the news in awe, but her heart was soaring. She's marrying someone else. That means Jasper can't court her anymore. A smile twinkled in her eyes. Thank you, God. Now he can see what she's really like. She's a rich girl. Of course she won't fall for someone like Jasper, who is in a profession that involves violence. Look at her fiancé. He's brilliant and a perfect match for her. Just live a happy married life, Willow. Never show up in front of Jasper again. I wonder if Jasper knows. Maybe I should remind him to check it out. Amy would love to see the look on Jasper's face, so she decided to show him the news herself. Amy guessed that Jasper must be working out now. He was incredibly disciplined when it came to maintaining his body. She came to the gym and saw that only Jasper was around. He had taken off his shirt, revealing his sexy abs underneath. He had the body of a Greek god, which captivated Amy. She thought it would be a waste if no woman could enjoy that body. Jasper saw that Amy had come, so he picked up his shirt and put it on. Amy approached him, smiling. She knew he couldn't hear her no matter what she said, so she scrolled her phone until she saw the news of the engagement again and handed her phone to him. Jasper took it and had a look. His pupils went wide, and he clenched his fists tightly. He felt like punching someone. Amy stared at him intently. She saw panic and worry in his eyes, but there was no fury or frustration at discovering this betrayal. What? He still doesn't hate her. Even when she's going to marry someone else. Jasper calmed down in the end. He handed Amy her phone back and was about to leave, but Amy stopped him. She typed something in her phone and showed it to Jazer. You're still going to find her, Jasper. Jasper frowned. That's my business. Amy typed, no, you can't. She's getting engaged. Just let her go. Let her find her happiness. Jasper looked at the message and stared into the distance. He knew Willow wasn't doing this for real. She just wanted to force him out of hiding and meet up with her. He didn't see this coming at first, and the photo riled him up. He was angry seeing her standing so close to another man. Fine. You win, Willow. I'll see you, and no one can stop me. Worried about Jasper's continued silence, Amy typed, Don't be rash, Jasper. You can't force love. If you love her, you should let her go. Jasper read the message and smiled. You don't know her at all. Amy gnashed her teeth angrily. This again. What does he mean I don't know her? The moment Jasper left, Amy called Antoine. Yes. Antoine, I think Jasper's going to leave the base and see Willow. Why? Because he saw the news. Willow's getting engaged in Averna. What? She's getting engaged. Antoine was delighted to hear that news. If that was the case, then his nephew would have no chance of getting back with Willow anymore, and he could finally give up. Show me the news. Antoine wanted to see it as well. You have to stop Jasper. He might ruin her engagement. I'll keep an eye on him, said Antoine. After he saw the news, he thought that the press graves only held this engagement to make Willow forget about Jasper. If that's the case, then it's a good thing. At least Jasper will give up now. Antoine left his office and came to Jasper's room. He was already packing up. Antoine put on a stern look. You're not allowed to leave, Jasper. Jasper picked up his luggage and turned to his uncle. I have to go. There was resolve in Jasper's eyes. Antoine paused for a moment. For the longest time, he had no idea what his nephew wanted, but at that moment, he knew. One could give Jasper the whole world, but he would refuse it. He just wanted Willow. Antoine knew Jasper. He couldn't stop the lad, who was a rebel, from leaving. Antoine sighed. Hold for a minute. I'll get you something. Jasper thought Antoine would stop him, but since his uncle was relenting, he too took a step back. He waited for a moment, and Antoine came back with a gift box. It was obviously from another country, and it was beautifully packaged too. Antoine opened it up. Jasper found himself presented with a hearing aid. Touched, Jasper looked at his uncle. So he was taking this for me. Antoine picked it up and handed it to him. Here, see if it can help you. 
Jasper tried regular hearing aids before, but they still couldn't help him hear. This, however, looked more advanced. He wore it around his ear, and after two weeks of total silence, his world was filled with sounds again. It wasn't as great as his own ears, but it was enough. Jasper nodded. Yeah, I can hear again. Antoine heaved a sigh. It's a stopgap. I'll find you a donor eventually. Thank you, uncle. Jasper hugged him. Antoine had been worrying about him all this time. After his parents' deaths, Antoine was his closest family member. Antoine saw Jasper as his own son as well. At that moment, he felt like he was seeing his own son spreading his wings and setting off into the world. Go, I have your back no matter what. Antoine then patted his shoulder. Jasper nodded. After he finished packing up a small suitcase, Antoine called his men and told them to give Jasper a ride on the chopper. Jasper quickly made his way to the helipad. Amy went after him. She saw a hearing aid hanging on his ear, so she shouted, Hold it right there, Jasper. Jasper stopped in his tracks. Amy approached him, confusion swirling in her eyes. She's getting engaged to someone else. Why are you still going after her? Do you have to bow to her like a, a dog? Amy threw herself onto him and wrapped her arms tightly around him. Please, just give me a chance. I'm as good as any woman out there. My love won't shine less than any other woman's. Jasper put his luggage down and held Amy's shoulder, staring at her. Amy, you're a brilliant woman. I've always seen you as a good companion and a subordinate, but you can't force love. Please, get that into your head. Jasper pushed her away and walked toward the helicopter. There was a spring in his step. A weight had been lifted off his heart. He could finally face the part of him he had been afraid to. He wished to free himself of his shackles and pursue the one he loved. Amy saw the helicopter off, and she closed her eyes in despair. Tears streamed down her cheeks. The news outlets were already spreading the news of Willow's engagement. Willow didn't care what they were doing. Right now, she was in Jasper's villa, looking at the message she left. I hope this still works. Just like how she did it the first time, she made him come back by starting an engagement. She had no idea if that idea would work again. If it failed, she would pack up her bags and find an island to live on while she licked her wounds. A military aircraft pierced the clouds and quickly landed in Averna's military base. A military off-road vehicle was already on standby, and Jasper tossed his bags into the backseat. He got into the car and charged onto the highway outside the airport. He was nervous and panicked. It had been a long time since he did something so impulsive. It had been too long since he followed his heart. Just then, Jasper slammed on the brakes, and the car skidded to a halt outside a florist. It shocked the pedestrians. They wondered how hard the guy must have stepped on the brakes to even cause sparks to fly out. What's the big rush? When Jasper came out of the car, a few young ladies covered their mouths. Internally, they were screaming. Oh my god, he's hot. Seeing him go into the florist, the girls had a question. Is he buying flowers for a girl? She must be the happiest girl on earth. A while later, Jasper came out with a bouquet of roses, and he carefully put it in the co-driver's seat. Then, he drove quickly toward his villa. He knew she was there, waiting for him. The shine of twilight rained into the villa. Willow stared at it. She could feel the sadness that was hanging in the air, and she closed her eyes. She was getting ready to leave, but then she heard sounds coming from the outside. She sighed. Perhaps it's the bodyguards. They might be in a hurry to tell me to leave. There's dinner tonight with Dad, Mom, and Leslie's parents, after all. She heard someone opening the door, but she didn't turn back. Ten minutes, she said. Jasper looked at the sad girl on the settee, and he felt something squeezing his heart. This is all my fault. She's disappointed because I can't make up my mind. Because I keep running away. Jasper slowly made his way to the settee. Hearing his footsteps, Willow thought the bodyguards were coming to tell her to hurry up. She turned slightly. I said, ten minutes. Jasper held out the bouquet and gently said, it's me, Willow. Willow's eyes went wide. She stood up and whirled around, only to be greeted by Jasper and the bouquet he was holding. It was as if time stopped at this moment. She felt her heart slowly racing, and faster and faster it went. 
she felt her broken heart slowly mend until it was whole again, delight surging within her. She then saw something hanging on the side of Jasper's head. It was probably a hearing aid. She didn't answer him but instead went around the settee quickly and stood behind him to have a closer look at what he was wearing. It looked advanced. Even though it was hanging on Jasper's head, it still looked nice. Still, Willow was worried for him. What is this? She asked quickly. Jasper turned around and faced her, still holding the bouquet of flowers. Hearing aid. What happened to your ears? Tears were glistening in Willow's eyes, and she broke down. She had always been tough around everyone else but not him. When he was around, she was just a fragile girl who needed his protection. Jasper put the bouquet down and pulled Willow into his embrace. She fell into his arms and took in his scent. She could smell a hint of antiseptic as well, so she knew that he must have been healing up all this time. I shouldn't have blacked out that day. Jasper looked at her and assured, my hearing is damaged, so I need this to help me. But don't worry, I'll be fine. Willow looked at him, tears in her eyes. I'll tell dad to get you the best doctor money can hire. I will make sure you're healed. Jasper patted her head. But we have the best doctor in our group. He's already coming up with a treatment plan, so you shouldn't trouble your dad. Willow held him tightly. She complained, why didn't you call me even once? Do you have any idea how much I've missed you? I thought you were, Willow stopped talking. She didn't want to say something unlucky. Jasper sighed. I'm sorry. This is my fault. Willow wanted to scold him, but after she saw the state he was in, she just wanted to give her all her love. She was touched. She wanted to thank him for coming back to her again. It made life worth living. Jasper clumsily picked up the flowers from the settee and told her, here's the roses you wanted. Willow was embarrassed. So you've seen me all this time. While I was at home. I can't explain why he came with flowers otherwise. Jasper didn't lie. Yeah, I saw everything, including every message you left. Willow thought she was silly for doing that. She took the bouquet and held it in her arms. Her eyes crinkled as a big grin curled her lips, but then she realized something. Worried, she said, oh, right. I have to cancel the engagement. I have to tell Leslie. I hope I can make it. Please don't let our parents meet yet. Please let Leslie have time to explain everything to his folks. And please don't let them yell at him. Willow called Leslie, and Leslie picked it up right away. Hey, Willow. I'm cancelling the meeting tonight, Leslie. He's back, said Willow. Leslie was happy for her. Really, he showed up. Willow looked at Jasper. She said, yeah, he did. He's right in front of me now. Leslie gave Willow his best wishes. I wish you happiness, Willow. I'll tell my folks. You tell yours too. Thanks, said Willow earnestly. Jasper narrowed his eyes. He had never seen her chatting with a guy that happily, and it made him jealous. He had looked into Leslie's background and knew how brilliant and good-looking he was. Could she have developed feelings for him? They hung out for a while, after all. Willow hung up, and then she saw Jasper staring at her with a conflicted aze. She blinked. What's wrong? You use the same trick again. Couldn't you have come up with something more creative? Jasper grumbled, smugly, Willow said, if it works, why change, the formula? I do have some cards up my sleeve. Leave me again, and I'll put them to use. Jasper pulled her into his embrace. He said in Al raspy voice, did you catch feelings for Leslie? Willow blinked. Why do you ask? Are you jealous? Jasper looked at her quietly. Willow put an arm around his neck and stood on tiptoes, and then she pressed her lips against his and kissed him. This was proof that he was the only one she loved. She would never fall for anyone else. Jasper stopped breathing for a moment. He put an arm around her waist and held the back of her head with his other hand. He held her in his embrace, declaring that she was his. Jasper was territorial like a wolf when it came to this matter. He then returned her kiss with more than double the passion. Willow closed her eyes, taking in his warmth and love. She pulled herself closer to him, and she felt him tightening his hug as well. There was no space between them, and it was as if nothing in the world could separate them now. A long, long while later, Willow's phone rang. Flustered, she quickly pushed Jasper away. 
Jasper was breathing heavily and staring at her pink face as she checked her phone. Oh no, it's my brother, he's going to kill me. Till take it. Jasper tried to take her phone. He would take all the scoldings for her. Willow was amused by his concern and chuckled. Don't worry, he won't actually kill me. Might lecture me, though. Willow took the call. Hey, Jared. Willow, Leslie just called. He cancelled the meeting. What happened? And he said you have something to tell me. What is it? Jared was worried. His sister's marriage was a big deal. Willow coughed. Yeah, I have something to tell you, Jared, but not now. I'll explain everything. When I get home. Tell dad and mom to calm down. Yeah, you should come home right now. Dad and mom are here too, said Jared. Willow hung up. Jasper held her hand and said, with determination, I'll go with you. Willow held his arm, not tonight, tomorrow, we'll have a meal at my place. I'll take all the lectures and scoldings. This whole fiasco was something I came up with, after all. I'm not scared, said Jasper. Willow blinked. I know, but just give me one night. We'll meet tomorrow. Willow didn't want him to leave either, but she had to go home and explain herself. She also wanted to show how determined she was to marry Jasper, and only Jasper. Willow stood on her tiptoe and kissed Jasper's cheek. Wait for me, and don't run away ever again. She picked up her purse and was about to leave, but then she saw the bouquet on the settee. Willow held it in her arms and waved Jasper goodbye. See you. Willow walked out of the house and got into the car. Quickly, they took her back home, but she had no idea that a green off-road vehicle was following her. The Pressgraves were waiting for Willow. They wanted to hear her part of the story since Leslie's family didn't say anything. Leslie didn't tell them the whole story, either. They wanted to hear their daughter's explanation. They wondered why the meeting was cancelled all of a sudden. Don't worry, guys. She's on her way back. How was she when you talked to her? Elliot asked. Worried, but that was it, answered Jared. His sister was up to a lot of things lately, and he was getting confused. He wondered what she was doing. Mom, Dad, just be patient. Willow will explain everything. There must be a reason for this, said Ellen. Anastasia nodded. She patiently waited for Willow to come back and explain everything. Twenty minutes later, the bodyguard stopped the car outside the house. Willow got out and came into the house only to be met by her whole family. Nervously, she approached her parents. Her head hung low as she said, I know you're mad. The engagement was a lie. I never planned on marrying Leslie. We were just putting on an act. Anastasia and Elliot were shocked. They couldn't believe their daughter would put on an act this big. Elliot looked a little reproachful, but he wasn't angry. Why did you do this? Because I equals. Before she could finish, someone else came in. The Pressgraves were surprised to see him. Jasper. A surprised Jared approached Jasper. He liked this guy. Jasper almost sacrificed himself for Willow, after all. Anastasia exchanged a look with her husband. Why did he show up all of a sudden? Jasper looked at the Pressgraves and took all the blame. Don't get angry at her. This is all my fault. Willow panicked. Dad, Mom, don't get mad at him. This isn't his fault. I did it. I came up with this plan to force him to come back. Anastasia exchanged another look with her husband. They believed Willow. Only a prankster like her would do something like this. Elliot welcomed Jasper as an elder. We're happy to see you safe and sound, Jasper. Welcome to my house. You're wrong, Dad. He lost his hearing just to save me, and now he needs a hearing aid, said Willow. Jasper had done too much for her. Elliot told Jasper, let's take this to the study Jasper. Elliot looked at Anastasia, who nodded. With his wife's approval, he could talk about this matter in depth. He urged Jasper again, come. We should talk, Jasper. Willow looked at her father nervously before turning back to look at Jasper with worry etched on her face. Jasper was nervous, but he played it cool. He nodded at Willow before quickly following Elliot. Once they were gone, Jared pulled his sister aside. Curious, he asked, how did you know he was alive? Willow said honestly, I heard you and dad talking about it. Jared looked resigned. I knew we wouldn't be able to hide it from her. She asked softly, I wonder what they're going to talk about. 
A smile curled Jared's lips. Why should you worry about them? You have a big mess to clean up yourself. Willow took the teasing willingly and swayed Jared's arm. Ah, but you'll help me, won't you, Jared? The company's PR can do anything. This is nothing for them, right? Ellen came over, smiling. Don't worry, Willow. He'll deal with the aftermath. Just enjoy your reunion with Jasper. Since Ellen had spoken, Jared put an arm over Willow's shoulder and told her, Fine. Since Ellen has taken your side, I'll deal with this for you. Willow, come here for a second. We need to talk, said Anastasia. When Willow turned around and saw her mother's slightly stern expression, she immediately calmed down and followed her mother to the corridor outside. Anastasia observed her daughter for a few seconds before asking, Do you like Jasper that much? Nodding firmly and seriously, Willow replied, I do. But his career and job will bring some uncertainties to your relationship in the future. Are you sure you're ready to be with him? Willow nodded toward her mother again. I'm sure, mom. Besides him, I will never fall for another man. After the fake engagement plan, Anastasia had a clear idea of her daughter's feelings. Willow had indeed fallen for Jasper. Mom, I would like to seek your and dad's approval. I've thought about it very clearly. I want to marry him, no matter what circumstances we might face. I'm afraid of none of them. Willow held her mother's hand and spoke out her mind. Caressing her daughter's head, Anastasia glanced at her. The daughter she raised was about to get married, and though she was somewhat reluctant to let go, she was happy for Willow because she found the man she loved, and her marriage would be out of true love. At that moment, Willow heard footsteps and turned around to see her father and Jasper approaching. She ran over to her father and asked, Dad, are you guys done talking? Elliot looked back at Jasper. Jasper, why don't you think about it again? This daughter of mine is a troublemaker. Unable to contain his laughter, Jasper replied, I just happen to be someone who deals with troublemakers. Upon hearing those words, Willow was stunned for a few moments, and her eyes widened with happiness as she glanced at her father. Dad, so I take it that you approved of our relationship. How can I not agree? They had even devised a fake engagement ceremony, so if I keep disagreeing, this daughter of mine might cause an even larger commotion. Willie, Jasper hasn't eaten anything yet. Bring him out for a meal at a restaurant, Elliot instructed his daughter. It was also a chance for them to spend some time together. Willow happily grabbed Jasper's hand and said, let's go. I'll bring you somewhere with nice food. Jasper turned to Elliot and said, Mr. and Mrs. Presgrave, we'll be leaving first. Anastasia watched them leave and said to her husband, how did it go? Jasper has decided to retire from the military for Willie's sake. From now on, he won't have to go on dangerous missions anymore. I believe he will be able to bring happiness to Willie. Anastasia also had faith in her daughter's taste, and after finding out Jasper was even willing to sacrifice his life for Willow, she and Elliot felt assured to leave their daughter in his hands. In the meantime, Willow felt relieved while sitting in Jasper's car. She turned to the man beside her and pleaded, Promise me that no matter what happens in the future, don't ever disappear from my side again and leave me alone. Okay. Jasper's deep gaze fell onto her face. I promise. She recalled a restaurant with great privacy and gave him the address. Then, they headed for that restaurant. Once they arrived, they chose a quiet room and ordered their food. The room seemed particularly cozy and comfortable, Jasper insisted that Willow sat on the couch. When she touched his ear, he understood that she was feeling distressed for him, so he held her hand and gazed at her gently. I'm fine, don't worry about me. After leaning into his embrace and snuggling into his chest, Willow felt a great sense of security. Besides her father and older brother, Jasper was the man she felt the safest with. It was as though she had the courage to go against the entire world whenever she stood beside him. Jasper rubbed her head and lightly kissed her hair, breathing in the faint floral scent on her body. Whenever he thought about the day of the rescue, he would still feel frightened. Every time he thought about it, his body would tense up, and he would feel chills run down his spine. If he hadn't succeeded in stopping Calvin at the last moment, the destructive bomb would explode right beside her. After he came to, he had nightmares about it for several nights straight, 
scaring him awake, drenched in sweat. Even though he had woken up, he still couldn't dispel the fear in him. Jasper tightened his hug around Willow, pulling her deeper into his embrace. Though Willow felt slightly breathless, she could sense the man's strong affection and didn't struggle, letting him hug her tightly. Meanwhile, Jasper soon realized he had been hugging her too tightly and released her. When Willow looked up, she met his deep eyes that were filled with affection. They resembled a sea of affection one she'd willingly drown in. Moreover, the emotion in his eyes no longer seemed restrained or suppressed but honest and passionate. Like a lake with clear water, his every emotion was clearly shown to her. Willow was elated because this man was finally hers, and hers alone. She no longer had to worry about him leaving. Just as she was about to kiss him, there was a knock on the door. It was probably the dishes they ordered, so Willow could only pull him back over to sit at the table. The sumptuous meal was served in one go. Since the waitress could sense the dense, flirty atmosphere in the room, she quickly left after serving the dishes. In addition, she had sneaked several glances at Jasper just now because she had never seen a handsome man who was also filled with positive energy. To be able to become the man's girlfriend would be the happiest thing in the world. Willow served the man some dishes while he stabbed a piece of fried shrimp with his fork and placed it beside her lips. Happily taking a bite, Willow chewed on her food while looking at the man with her bright eyes. The man hadn't eaten anything but had already gulped several times. No matter how delicious the food was, they weren't as attractive to him as the young woman before him. Following that, the couple fed each other, one mouthful after another, and finished their dinner after an hour. Once they were done eating, Jasper brought Willow strolling at a nearby square. Since Jasper had always been busy with work, this was the first time he had such a relaxing stroll while holding hands with someone else. Willow held his arm and occasionally looked up to admire the man's appearance. Everywhere he walked by, he would attract the attention of other women. That was because he was too stunning. No matter it was his temperament or appearance, he was the most eye-catching one in the crowd. Wow, he's so handsome. Is he a celebrity? A young woman gasped. Willow looked back and saw several young women had stopped walking and were busy trying to take photos of Jasper sneakily. Suddenly, Willow felt somewhat displeased because she didn't intend to benefit other women when deciding to bring her man out. She held the man's arm and walked toward a less crowded area. Let's go over there. Jasper immediately held her shoulders and headed to a less crowded street. Some trees were shielding the area, and coupled with the dim yellow streetlights, it created the perfect spot for a date. However, once they arrived, Willow discovered what this spot was used for. It was an attraction for couples. There were couples on each bench spaced about 10 meters apart. Some were hugging each other, some were whispering sweet nothings to each other, and some were even kissing. Blushing, Willow held Jasper's arm and walked away but unexpectedly came to an even more deserted pathway. While Willow wanted a quiet place for them to enjoy the night view together, with how vicious and complicated modern society was, ordinary people wouldn't dare wander into such places because there were bound to be hidden dangers there. For example, thieves. After Willow and Jasper were over 20 meters down the pathway, three men suddenly appeared, with one in front of them and two behind them. If an ordinary couple had stumbled upon such a situation, they would have been shivering in fear and at a loss. Willow noticed the three were relatively young. Obviously, they were too lazy to make an effort and relied only on robbing others to get by, so Willow kindly reminded them, if you don't want to end up in the hospital, I'd suggest you leave now. Don't even think about robbing us. Miss, hand over your bag immediately and take off your watch and jewelry. Otherwise, we'll let you have a taste of what it feels like to get stabbed. Now, move it. One of them viciously threatened the couple. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.